okay we'll start so look into page number 58 segment 6 input tax credit input tax credit is one of the major chapter in gst wherein you know in one attempt 70 marks they have tested on input tax credit itself so november 2018 attempt okay so that much important it is but thereafter they are not asking that many marks and all but uh, this chapter is quite important the two first question you cannot think of the first question without input tax credit mandatorily in the first compulsory question they will be testing this input tax credit and in this input tax credit chapter we have section 38 section 41 section 16 then 17 18 19 20 and 21 so even we have section 49 sub section 5 so these are the various sections that are connected in this okay now each and every section we will try to understand the first section that i am going to discuss is about section 41 what the section 41 deals with how to avail input tax credit and how much input tax credit can be availed okay that is about this section 41 and here you can see previously any amount of credit can be taken but now only matched itc can be taken unmatched itc cannot be taken so what is the meaning of matched itc supplier will be reporting the details of outward supplies in one return called as gstr1 or iff invoice furnishing facility if they are opting for qrmp scheme they will be filing iff in that they will add the invoice details otherwise monthly returns means they will upload the details of outward supplies in gstr1 and whenever this gstr1 is filed by the due date based on the supplier's gstr1 the data is made available to recipient in gstr 2b got it again i am repeating i am a supplier i will make a supply to you the moment i make a supply to you this invoice i should add in one return what is it return gstr 1 and when i file that gstr 1 by the due date based on my gstr 1 the portal will make the data available to you in your gstr 2b so whatever data that comes in gstr 2b is only match the itc why will there be difference between so this gstr 2b itc versus the itc as per your books why there will be a difference between itc as per this gstr 2b versus itc as per your books reason number 1 supplier not filed gstr 1 reason number 2 supplier filed gstr1 after due date okay he filed gstr1 but he filed gstr1 after due date or supplier filed gstr1 by due date but missed the invoices to be entered okay number 1 he did not file gstr1 at all number 2 he filed gstr1 late number 3 he filed gstr1 on time but he missed adding the invoices number 4 he filed gstr1 on time and he reported the invoice but entered the wrong details in the invoice because of that reason so there will be mismatch between itc as per your books versus the itc that is reflected in 2b now whatever itc that is reflected in your 2b is only the basis but not the itc that is there in your books now how much itc a person can avail as per section 41 a person can avail self assessed itc what is the meaning of self assessed itc whatever itc that is reflected in 2b to the itc three adjustments needs to be made for addition and three adjustments to be made for deduction so first we need to take whatever is the itc that is reflected in 2b minus blocked itc blocked itc means there are some invert supplies on which we should not take itc as per section 17 sub section 5 these itcs are known as blocked itc but the portal don't know whether it is a blocked itc or not to us so it will be made available in gstr 2b but we should not take that that's why even though it is coming in 2b we should reduce that that is first reduction blocked itc 
because the supplier don't know it is blocked ATC for us. The portal also don't know whether it is blocked ATC for us. So the supplier will add the invoice in GSTR 1. It will be made available to us in GSTR 2B. But we should be careful in removing that. We should not take that. And then second, used for non-business purpose. So that also we don't know. Whenever a supplier adds the invoices, how he will know whether we are using it for non-business purpose, how portal will know we are using it for non-business purpose. So naturally it will come in to be. But as we are using this invert supply for non-business purpose, we should not enjoy the ATC. So we need to reduce it. Then used for exempted supplies. So again same. We purchase something and we are using it for exempted supply. But portal don't know that we are using it for exempted supply. So it will come in to be, but we should not take. So what are the three deductions we need to make from the ITC as per 2B? ITC as per 2B minus blocked ITC minus ITC with respect to non-business purpose minus ITC with respect to exempted supplies. Then three things we need to add means we can take that credit. What is that? Whatever GST that we pay under RCM, we can avail it as ITC. Is it in the same month or next month? Whatever GST we paid under RCM, whether we avail it as ITC in the same month or next month, same month. This month itself we will pay tax under RCM and the same month we can take it as ITC. But very, very important point is that whatever GST that we paid under RCM, we can avail as ITC cannot be adjusted with RCM liability, can be adjusted only against FCM liability. Why? Because RCM liability should always be paid using electronic cash ledger. We cannot use input tax credit balance for payment of RCM liability. So whatever GST we pay under RCM will not come in to be. Why it will not come in to be? Because the recipient is only paying the taxes. The supplier may not add these invoices in their GSTR1. Because of this, it may not come in to be, even though it is not coming in to be, it's an exception where we can take that ITC, so plus GST under RCM. Then second, reavailment of ITC reversed earlier. What is that? So we have availed ITC in the last month, uh, like three months before, and we reverse the ITC. Why we reverse the ITC? There are two reasons why we will reverse the ITC. Reason number one, we have to make payment to the supplier within 180 days from the date of invoice. If we are not making payment to supplier within 180 days from the date of invoice, whatever ITC we have availed needs to be reversed. Say we reversed it in the last month. Again, we made the payment this month. Can we reavail the ITC back? Yes, but it will not come in to be because it is reversed ITC we are reavailing. So it will not come in to be. Even then we can take no issue. So first GST paid under RCM, reavailment of ITC reversed earlier. Then third one, ITC not availed in the earlier months, but availed now. What is that? Say this ITC pertains to somewhere April month and I missed taking this ITC in April month. So therefore, I want to take ITC in July month. Is it possible? Yes, but in July month to be it will not come because it would have reflected in to be of April, but I am availing ITC in July. So in July month to be it will not come, but it was there in the to be of April. Can I take the ITC now? Yes, I can take the ITC now. ITC not availed in earlier period, but reflected in to be of the period. So this is the cases where we avail the ITC in GSTR 3B. So what are the adjustments we need to make? Three exclusions, three inclusions. First, what is the base that we need to take? ITC as per GSTR 2B minus blocked ITC minus used for non-business minus used for exempted. Then add back GST under RCM. Then add reavailment of ITC reversed earlier. Then again add ITC not availed in the earlier periods, but availed in the current period. Okay. It is not reflected in current to be, but it was reflected in the to be of the earlier tax periods. So this much is known as self-assessed ITC. Now, in this regard, we need to know one more statement that is GSTR 2A. So there are two returns or two statements where the details of invert supplies are available. The moment supplier files his GSTR1, 
the data will be reflected both in GSTR 2A as well as GSTR 2B. Both are related to invert supplies only. But what is the document relevant for the purpose of availment of ITC? Is it 2A or 2B? 2B only. 2A is only for reference purpose. 2A is not the document on the basis of which we can avail the ITC. We can avail ITC only on the basis of 2B. That is the basic difference. So what is the purpose of 2A only for reference purpose? But what is the purpose of 2B for availment of ITC? What is the difference between these two? 2A is a dynamic document, but 2B is a static document. What does it mean? Suppose if the supplier makes any change to his GSTR1, so G GSTR 2A will have the effect of that. GSTR 2A is like a Google sheet. So if I make any change at my place, automatically we will be able to see that. Okay, on a real time basis, it gets updated. Even if GSTR 1 of that month filed late, it will be coming in GSTR 2A. But GSTR 2B is not like that. GSTR 2B works on a cutoff model. That is, GSTR 2B is like a normal Excel sheet which I am sending you in mail. If I make any correction here also, it will not be reflected there. You understood or not? So therefore, GSTR 2B will be generated by 13th of the month following every month. Which means that by due date, if the supplier has filed GSTR 1, those data only will be reflected in 2B. Got it? So 2B is not a dynamic document. 2B is a static document. And TDS, TCS details will be available in 2A but not in 2B. And details of invoices, if GSTR 1 filed after due date, will it be reflected in 2A of that month? Yes, because I told you, even if the GSTR 1 is filed after due date, it will be reflected in 2A, but it will not be reflected in 2B, but it will be reflected in 2B of next month. What is the due date of filing GSTR 1? 11th of the month following every month. And in case of QRMP, 13th of the month following every quarter. So that's the reason why the cutoff date for generation of GSTR 2B is 13th. Suppose if a person, supplier, my supplier, okay, my supplier has filed the GSTR 1 on 12th. His due date is 11th. He filed on 12th. Now, will it come in the GSTR 2B of this month? No, it will not come. But it will come in the GSTR 2A of this month? Yes. But this transaction, he filed return late. So, this transaction will be reflected in the GSTR 2B of next month. So, that is this. However, it is reflected in the subsequent month GSTR 2B. What are these returns basically GSTR 1, 2A, 2B, 3B. So these are the regular returns of every registered person. GSTR 1 contains the details of outward supplies. There won't be any other details. Whether they need to pay tax at the time of filing GSTR 1. So no need to pay tax at the time of filing GSTR 1. Just it will contain the details of outward supplies. And GSTR 2A based on GSTR 1 of the supplier. So the data will be reflected, auto-populated in GSTR 2A. Same way 2B also, but 2B is a static month-wise auto-drafted statement. And GSTR 3B is a consolidated return that contains the details of outward supplies, inward supplies. And at the time when we file GSTR 3B, we need to pay the tax. At the time of filing GSTR 1, no need to pay the tax. But at the time of filing 3B, we need to pay the tax. Now. This section 41 has got one more provision here. What does it say? If the supplier has filed his GSTR 1, can we take the ITC even if he has not filed the 3B? Again, I am repeating, I am your supplier. I filed GSTR 1. The moment I filed my GSTR 1, it will come in your 2B. So you can take the ITC even if I have not filed my 3B means even if I have not paid the tax, you can take the ITC. But I have to pay the tax. By when I have to pay the tax? By September 30th of the next financial year, I have to pay the tax. That is what section 41 says. So have a look into this. This is an amendment here, section 41 read with rule 37A. So there is a supplier and this supplier reports the invoice in GSTR1 and it is filed within the time. As and when supplier files the return within the time, this data will be auto-populated to the recipient in GSTR 2B, correct? 
it is reflected in to be of the recipient auto populated now what recipient will do whether the recipient has to wait till the time the supplier files 3b no the supplier he don't have to wait till the time supplier files 3b so the recipient can avail the itc immediately itself itc can be availed in gstr 3b on self assessed basis now supplier has to file gstr 3b by when by september 30th of next financial year so that much time has been given in rule 37a so for the transaction which happens between april 2023 to march 2024 what is the time limit for filing 3b september 2024 are you understanding transaction that happens between april 2023 to march 2024 what is the time limit for you know filing 3b or in the sense like payment of taxes for those periods september 2024 if your supplier has not paid the tax in 3b by september 2024 you already availed itc na now you need to reverse it why you need to reverse it because your supplier did not pay the tax sir for the mistake of my supplier why am i penalized like that only we will create if you like stay in india otherwise leave so therefore you know you need to reverse the itc got it why because you purchased from that bad boy your supplier is a bad boy he did not pay taxes to us so therefore you are we are asking you to reverse sir only reversal is enough no no pay interest also how it is that so reversal of itc after september 30th of next financial year along with interest what is the rate of interest 18% under section 50 sub section 3 but before 30th november of the next financial year so what is the time limit by which you should reverse 30th november of the succeeding financial year what is the logic of this 30th november usually 30th november is the time limit for availment of itc so they are telling by 30th november you should reverse the itc 30th november of what next year means by 30th september if your supplier did not pay the tax you have october november two months so therefore in this two months you do the reversal of itc and whenever you reverse the itc it will come under wrongly availed itc so therefore we need to do the interest computation as per 50 sub section 3 what does 50 sub section 3 says we need to compute interest from the date of utilization not availment old provision date of availment is wrong now date of utilization till the date of reversal we need to compute the interest sir this itc i have not at all utilized no need to pay interest this itc i have not utilized i just took it it is there in my books it is there in my credit ledger i did not use it no need to pay interest how to prove that you have used the itc or not used the itc how much itc you avail 1 lakh what is the balance of your itc every month more than 1 lakh means you did not use the itc as simple as that how much itc you avail 1 lakh how much is your balance in itc every month 1 lakh you maintained which means you did not use the itc at all suppose if in any month the balance in itc falls below 1 lakh say the balance came to 60000 in that month in which the balance in itc came down to 60000 40000 you have used got it what is the meaning of utilization of itc for the purpose of computing the interest whenever the wrongly availed itc balance in itc equal to or greater than the wrongly availed itc we have not utilized the wrongly availed itc in any month if the balance in itc falls below the wrongly availed itc to that extent we have used it in that month so we need to start doing the interest computation from that month till the date of reversal of itc that is about section 50 sub section 3 now so what you did as your supplier did not pay the taxes by september 30th you need to reverse the itc along with interest thereafter you called your supplier and you said bloody idiot i have made purchase from you if you are making payment or not if you are not making payment refund my money or i will put one bomb on you like that you are threatening him 
now what supplier did sorry sorry sir i will file the return so he filed a return when after 30th september after 30th september gstr 3b has been filed now in this case you already reverse the itc along with interest na that much you can reavail as itc interest interest and all don't expect okay at least be happy that you are getting itc okay so too much expectation you have from government so itc reverse excluding interest earlier can be reavailed without any time limit okay so for this reavailment of itc only there is no time limit and even it need not be matched with gstr 2b because already it was matched itc only which you reverse and you are reavailing understood so tell me this seven steps come on step number 1 supplier will be reporting the details of invoice in gstr 1 as and when supplier reports the details of invoice in gstr 1 it will be made available to recipient in gstr 2b based on the gstr 2b of the recipient recipient can avail the itc even if supplier has not paid the taxes in gstr 3b but the supplier has to pay the tax in 3b by september 30th of the next financial year if supplier has not filed taxes by filing 3b by september 30th of next financial year the recipient should reverse the itc by 30th november of the succeeding financial year along with interest at the rate of 18% per annum from when from the date of utilization till the date of reversal okay and as and when supplier again files gstr 3b the recipient can reavail the itc but interest cannot be availed as itc and without any time limit they can reavail got it in this entire process what is the loss interest is the loss so that interest is the loss for the recipient which is a gain to the government okay next here this is about section 41 and definitely for november 23 exam this section 41 will be tested at least for interest computation because this is an amendment applicable only from november 23 exam onwards okay then next one you see so we completed section 41 the next one is section 49 sub section 5 manner of utilization of credit so in this manner of so far what we have seen in section 41 is availment of itc in section 49 sub section 5 we are going to discuss utilization of itc in utilization of itc we have to remember this four principles principle number 1 there is no restriction with respect to igst what does it means igst credit can be utilized for payment of any gst liability and any gst credit can be utilized for payment of igst liability for example we have cgst credit cgst credit and sgst credit sgst credit then utgst credit and igst credit and same way we have cgst payable that is liability yes gst payable then igst sorry utgst payable and thereafter igst payable now can cgst credit be utilized for payment of cgst liability yes and can cgst credit be utilized for payment of sgst payable utgst payable no but cgst credit can be utilized for payment of igst payable then what about sgst credit cannot be used for payment of cgst can be used for payment of sgst cannot be used for payment of utgst can be used for payment of igst what about utgst credit cannot be used for payment of cgst sgst but can be used only for payment of utgst and it can also be used for payment of igst same way igst credit we don't have any restriction it can be used for payment of all liabilities now what is that we can conclude from this so with respect to this igst payable with respect to this igst payable so we can use all the credits same way 
so all the credits can be used for payment of IGST liability so there is no restriction with respect to IGST which means IGST credit can be utilized for payment of any GST liability and any GST credit can be utilized for payment of IGST liability but with respect to other three respective credits can be used only for payment of respective liabilities and cross utilization is not possible these are the two points you need to remember in first principle then second principle is that what is the order of utilization so first we have IGST credit IGST credit can be utilized for payment of all liabilities but in this what is the priority first you use IGST credit for IGST liability thereafter between CGST, SGST and UTGST in any manner any proportion you can use so what is the first principle you need to remember there is no restriction with respect to IGST which means IGST credit can be utilized for payment of any GST liability any GST credit can be utilized for payment of IGST liability between the other three respective credits can be utilized for payment of respective liabilities then the second principle is related to order of utilization when I have IGST credit first I need to use it for payment of IGST liability thereafter between CGST, SGST, UTGST in any manner in any proportion I can use 30% for CGST and 70% for SGST or I can use 50% 50% or fully I can use for SGST in any manner in any proportion depending upon the liability and credits I can use it whereas CGST credit when I am using first I need to use it for payment of CGST liability thereafter I need to use it for IGST liability SGST credit also same first we need to use it for payment of SGST liability thereafter IGST liability UTGST credit also first for payment of UTGST liability and then for payment of IGST liability so this is the order of utilization that is second principle then third what we have is that before utilizing CGST and SGST credit the credit of IGST should be fully exhausted so don't spend CGST, SGST credit first. So which credit we need to use first? IGST credit should be exhausted before touching CGST, SGST and UTGST credit. And then fourth principle. The fourth principle is I have, I have IGST liability and all the credits. I have IGST liability and all the credits. Which credit I will use? Anyhow IGST credit. Thereafter which credit I should use? CGST credit. Thereafter which credit? SGST or UTGST credit. What is the difference between this point and the order of utilization in the second principle? In the second principle they are telling you have one credit and multiple liabilities. But in the fourth principle you have multiple credits and only one liability. That is the difference. So when you have IGST credit first for IGST thereafter CGST, SGST, UTGST any manner any proportion when you have all the credits but only one liability that is IGST liability anyhow first you need to use IGST credit thereafter CGST credit thereafter SGST or UTGST credit so these are the four principles that we need to keep in mind so before making the order of utilization but in all these things so one place where really it will be difficult for us is that when we have all the credits and all the liabilities when we have CGST, SGST and IGST. Let's assume that we have liability of CGST, SGST, IGST. So gross liability of 5000, 5000 and 5000. This is the gross liability of CGST, SGST and IGST. And input tax credit if you see CGST will be 2000, SGST will be 2000 and IGST will be 10,000. So now here what happens is that first we will use principle number 3 says first which credit should be exhausted IGST credit should be exhausted so therefore IGST credit we will use for payment of first what IGST liability still how much balance we have 5000 so what we can do with respect to that 5000 we can use it for payment of CGST as well as SGST. Suppose if I am using fully for CGST, what will happen in this case? 
is this answer correct no the answer is not correct how you know the answer is not correct see the total of the gross liability the total of the gross liability is what 5 plus 5 plus 5 15 what is the total of the input tax today 14 then the answer should be how much 1000 but if I do this way I will not get 1000 how sir simple say this so what I will do is that gross liability gross liability 5000 5000 and 5000 and I am having IGST credit what is that IGST credit that is 10,000 first I am using for payment of 5000 and I am using them for payment of 5000 of CGST thereafter we have CGST and SGST credit so we cannot use CGST credit why we cannot use CGST credit because we don't have the CGST liability so only SGST credit we will use that is to the extent of 2000 can CGST credit be used for payment of SGST liability no impossibilities because of which what will happen to my net liability the net liability will become 0 3000 and 0 and there is excess ITC carried forward that excess ITC carried forward will be 2000 rupees actually this is a mistake here because the net liability should be always how much 1000 how the net liability can be 1000 because the total of the gross liability is 15000 and the total of the input tax credit is 14000 then the answer should be 1000 so then this is not the correct way then what I should do is that I should ensure that I am not spending fully for CGST credit then what I should do you use it based on the credit balance of CGST what is the CGST credit already you have 2000 means don't give full 5000 you give an amount where this 2000 should become utilized so means how much we will be giving for CGST 3000 and remaining 2000 for SGST so this 2000 of CGST credit gets utilized CGST and SGST credit gets utilized 2000 and 2000 so what will happen to the liability 0 1000 0 and there is no excess ITC that will be carried forward is this the only answer no we can also follow some other way also what we can do is that we can distribute you know 2500 2500 also when we distribute 2500 2500 then the net liability will become 500 and 500 so multiple answers exist but what is the correct answer the total of this net liability should be equals to 1000 how we got that 1000 total of gross liability minus total of ITC is 1000 if you ensure that the total becomes 1000 any answer will be correct answer either 500 500 0 thousand or 1000 0 multiple answers exist in this so that is with respect to manner of utilization of credit so IGST credit after utilizing for payment of IGST liability can be used for payment of CGST SGST or UTGST in any proportion so multiple answers possible in exam so what is that my view depending upon CGST SGST liability you divide that is best what is that here in this question what is the ratio of CGST SGST liability equal ratio not then you divide the IGST credit whatever excess you have in this ratio then automatically you will get the perfect answer what is that 2525 CGST SGST liability is 5000 5000 equal ratio correct so excess credit what you have also you divide equally 2500 2500 so you will end up with 500 and 500 so that is what I have given over there then what about GST compensation says GST compensation says that we paid on invert supply can be taken as input tax credit but GST compensation says can be set off only against GST compensation says payable on outward supplies we can't do anything with respect to that that is GST compensation says can be set off only against GST compensation says payable can the GST compensation says credit be utilized for payment of IGST liability no it cannot be used for payment of IGST liability so we completed so far two sections that is section 41 and section 49 subsection 5 41 is about what availment of ITG 49 subsection 5 is what utilization of ITC okay so can you all get up and sit once
हाँ सिट 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 As if I am a singing a ulubi, no? Uh, I'll exit your sleeping. Exam, yeah. CA final exam. Anyhow, not studied anything. This five days only you are going to study. In this five days, at least be concentrated, no? Huh? Trimate is like that. We can't do anything with respect to that. You should not sleep. Okay. Then, any doubt in these two sections that we have seen so far? Section forty one and section forty nine, subsection five. Can I proceed? Yes. Okay. See this section sixteen conditions for availment of ITC. Only a registered person can avail ITC. So as per section sixteen, there are certain conditions. All these conditions should be satisfied. So then only ITC can be availed. What are those conditions? Total eight conditions we have. Number one, only a registered person can avail ITC. Of course, unregistered person cannot avail ITC. So that is a simple one. Second, the inward supplies on which ITC to be availed should be used or intended to be used in the course or furtherance of business. Should be used means what? Used for the existing. Intended to be used means I am not using it now. I will be using it in future. Even then, I can take ITC. So I am purchasing a machinery. and that machinery i will keep it in my place and daily i will look at that machinery i will not use it even then can i take it is yes no problem you can take the it is usage is not at all a criteria intended to be used in the course or furtherance of business in the course of business means for my existing business and in the furtherance of business means for some activity which i am going to start in future so that is about this first condition only a registered person can avail it is second the inward supply should be used or intended to be used in the course or furtherance of business third the recipient should be in possession of tax paid document what is called as a tax paid document tax invoice debit note isd invoice and bill of entry these are the four tax paid documents on the basis of which credit can be taken tax invoice normal when debit note will be given by supplier to recipient whenever there is a increase in the invoice value supplier will be giving a debit note to the recipient and on that also recipient can take itc then isd invoice input service distributor invoice so that is a head office which will register as input service distributor will distribute the credit to the branch officers so that is known as input service distributor for example we have a corporate office so corporate office corporate office of a company is say located in maharashtra and this corporate office is having four factories factory 1 factory 2 factory 3 and factory 4 so which is located in different states say tamil nadu kerala kerala factory impossible so karnataka and then uh, andhra pradesh and telangana like that so four different factories are there now in this case what will happen there is a chartered accountant who provided the services okay who provided the services to all the factories but raise invoice to the corporate office correct start audit will be done for all the branches for all the factories audit service is provided but each and every factory he cannot raise invoice so a single invoice will be raised to the corporate office now the corporate office will take the itc with respect to that and distribute that input tax credit to all the factories so this head office or corporate office is known as input service distributor what they do they receive the input service invoice on which they avail the itc and they distribute the credit to the branches so this head office or corporate office is known as input service distributor how they distribute the credit using the isd invoice so therefore the factory on the basis of isd invoice given by the head office they can take itc so that's the reason why isd invoice is one of the tax paid document on the basis of which itc can be availed bill of entry is a document which will be filed by importer at the time of import for clearances of goods from the customs authorities so this bill of entry contains the igst component so that igst component can be taken as credit so what are the various tax paid documents total four tax invoice 
debit note, ISD invoice and bill of entry. Then fourth condition, recipient should have actually received the goods or services. What does it mean? Invoice is in the month of March, but the goods are received in the month of April. Then in that case, can the ITC be taken? No, ITC cannot be taken in March. ITC can be taken only in April. Why? Invoice? Yes, invoice is one of the documents for taking ITC. But subject to other condition, what is the other condition? You should have actually received the goods or services. So usually in case of advances, what will happen? Invoice will be given for that advance amount. But can we take ITC? No, because we have not actually received the goods or services. So ITC cannot be taken. So ITC can be taken only on receipt of goods or services. And the supplier should have furnished the details in GSTR1. Yes, otherwise it will not become matched ITC. So the supplier should report the details of outward supplies in GSTR1 and the tax should have been paid by the supplier. By when? Supplier should add the details of invoice in GSTR1 and he should pay the tax. By when? September 30th of the succeeding financial year. Supplier should have paid tax with respect to such supply by September 30th of next financial year. Then how to avail the ITC? Only by filing 3B we can avail the ITC. Is there any other way we can take ITC? No other way. The only way we can avail ITC in credit ledger is by filing GSTR 3B. So therefore recipient should have filed the returns that is GSTR 3B. And one more condition, GST paid on invert supply should be reflected in GSTR 2B under ITC available and should not be restricted. What is this? As per section 38, there are few cases where even though supplier reports the details of invoices in GSTR 1, but the recipient will not be able to take ITC because in GSTR 2B, it will come under ITC not available. So in GSTR 2B document, there will be two columns, ITC available and ITC not available. So, supplier filing GSTR1? Yes. Supplier adds the invoice in GSTR1? Yes. Even then, why sir? I will not be able to take this ITC. Why is it restricted? Let's see what government wants us to do. You can see the section 38 in returns chapter. Actually, the section 38 comes over there. I have given it there. So, please check this in page number 118. Check this in page number 118. In the following cases, even though supplier declared the details of outward supplies in GSTR 1, ITC can be restricted in 2B as per section 38. Why? Because that supplier is a newly registered business. Supplier is newly registered business. So, you purchase from him. So, he is newly registered. Okay. That's what, why? He is newly registered means he may not file the returns yet uh, and therefore till the time he regularizes his returns, you will not be getting ITC. But he filed GSTR1. He filed GSTR1 but we will tell how much time, maybe 6 months or 1 year after that we will give you. Okay? You did not like? Leave the country. Who want you? So supplier is a newly registered business. Okay? Because we elected some people. They went to parliament. They created this law. So therefore, it is your mistake only. Face the consequences. So supplier is a newly registered business. Then, supplier has filed GSTR1, not filed 3B. Okay, but what I did? Your supplier, you purchased from him. Why you purchased from him? You purchased from him. So you face the consequences. So your supplier has filed GSTR1, but he did not file 3B. So, if you buy from such a supplier, even though he reports the details in GSTR1, you will not be able to take ITC for the subsequent periods. Okay, this is also fine to some extent. Supplier liability in GSTR1 greater than liability in 3B. How will I know? I am an innocent recipient. My supplier's liability in GSTR1 is greater than his 3B liability. What the period did? He showed 10 lakhs as liability in GSTR1, but he paid only 5 lakhs. So 5 lakhs he did not pay because, you know, he don't have money. Is that my problem? Your problem only. Why you purchase from him? So you will not get ITC. Okay. 
supplier liability in GSTR 1 greater than GSTR 3B. This is also okay. Next point you see. Supplier ITC in his 3B is more than his 2B. That T date made a mistake in ITC. For that your ITC is gone. You understood? His ITC in 3B is greater than his ITC in 2B. Now you are purchasing from such a supplier. Even though he reports the details of invoice in GSTR 1, you cannot take ITC. Okay. Then supplier received demand notices and defaulted in payment of tax. Who? You are. Not you. You are supplier. And you are purchasing from such a person. So you cannot take ITC. Supplier has received demand notices and defaulted in payment of taxes and such default continues. Then last, supplier defaulted in payment of 1% of gross liability through electronic cash ledger in terms of rule 86B. What is this rule 86B? Every person who has even though sufficient money in their credit ledger but should pay 1% of their liability through cash ledger. Why? Because government don't have liquidity or whatever money they have fully they spent during covid time and all fully they have spent just before covid only one big statue got constructed in gujarat then if they say we don't have money then everyone will ask that factor that's why what they did okay even if you have credit balance in your ledger pay one percent why sir i should pay we created rule here 86b we created you pay okay for example i have 10 lakhs as liability and credit i have 15 lakhs even then i have to pay 10 lakhs into 1% as cash ledger means in cash why liquidity then only they can survive you understood or not as good as 1 rupee like that you know they will be asking got it so that is this and that's okay if my supplier has not paid that 1% and from such a supplier if I buy I will not be able to take ITC Maybe while drafting this provision, they might be high on weed here, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, this kind of provision and all will not be coming, okay? So, how here? It is not at all the mistake of the recipient. And now the recipient is being penalized. On one hand, you said, only match credit you will get. Already, whatever invoice if you have also, you fold and keep somewhere. It is of no use. Whatever match credit only you can take, okay? Second, even if it is reported by your supplier, if your supplier comes under this category, you will not be able to take ITC. So, what are the situations? Come on. Supplier is a newly registered business. So, don't buy anything from a newly registered person and all. Okay. Then number two. So, suppliers. Supplier has not filed GSTR 3B. So, check the supplier whether he is filing GSTR 3B and GSTR 1 properly or not. So, do a compliance audit before making any purchases. So, ask the supplier, idiot, show me all your returns and all. So, you are filing regularly, okay, I will buy from you. Then third, also check between their GSTR 1 and their GSTR 3B whether there is any mismatch. Mismatch, I don't need to from, no, I don't need anything from you. Why? Mismatch between your GSTR1 and GSTR3B, don't buy from them. And then supplier has received demand notices, ask them. So you are going for purchase of one laptop, okay. And instead of asking what is the configuration, what is the price, did you got any GST notice? <laughs> Whether you got any GST notice? Yes, sir. Okay, I will not buy from you. I will go to some other shop because I will not get credit. So supplier has received demand notices. Then ask the supplier, whether your turnover exceeds 50 lakhs? Yes, sir. In a month? Yes. Are you paying 1% of your liability through cash ledger? No, no, I am not paying. Okay, I will not buy from you. Why I will not buy from you? Because I will not get the credit. You understood? So, you should ensure that these things are not done by the supplier. Literally, you go and do their returns here best. Then only you will be uh, having assurance. Okay. Then, supplier, say this. GST paid on invert supply should be reflected in GSTR 2B under ITC available and should not be restricted. So that is as per section 38 in few cases ITC shall be restricted in GSTR 2B. So these are the 8 conditions. If these 8 conditions are satisfied only then so recipient can take ITC. Come on tell me what are the 8 conditions supplier should be registered. And number 2. 
the invert supply should be used or intended to be used in the course or further ends of business. Number three, you should have actually received the goods or services. Next, you should be in possession of tax paid document. Then your supplier should have reported the details in GSTR 1 and your supplier should pay the taxes by 30th September of the succeeding financial year. Then, recipient should file the GSTR 3B and your supplier should have reported the details of GSTR 1 and that should not be restricted in your GSTR 2B. Clear or not? So, all these conditions. Then, what is the meaning of input tax? Input tax means tax paid under CGST Act, SGST Act or UTGST Act or IGST Act. But input tax does not include tax paid under composition scheme. Because generally a person who is opting for composition scheme will not be collecting GST from the customer. Should not collect GST from the customer. And if they collect GST from the customer, can the customer take ITZ? No, because input tax definition excludes tax paid under composition levy. And even tax paid under RCM can be taken as credit? Yes. So input tax includes tax paid under reverse charge basis. Then what are the contents of an invoice for the purpose of availing the ITC? Any document that contains this six like these five details will be called as a valid document for availment of ITC. So what are the details that it should be there in the document? Description of goods or services value of goods or services, amount of tax, GSTN of supplier and recipient and place of supply. So what are the details? GSTN of supplier and recipient, then value of goods, tax, description of goods and place of supply. Then the document will be called as a valid document for the purpose of availment of ITC. Then what is the meaning of invert supplies? Invert supplies can be capital goods, inputs or input services. What is the difference between capital goods and inputs? If any goods are purchased and capitalized in the books of the recipient, it is known as capital goods. If any goods are purchased and charged it to p and then it will be known as inputs and any service received will be input services. But all these three should be used or intended to be used in the course or furtherance of business. In case of capital goods, can we take the entire credit in the first month in which it is purchased itself? Yes, we don't have any restriction. So in the earlier indirect tax only we had like 50%, 50% like that, but now nothing like that. This month we purchase capital goods, this month itself we can take full ITC with respect to that capital goods. Then there is one concept of deemed delivery. What is this deemed delivery? In case of bill to ship to transactions, it will happen. For example, I am getting an order from you and I raise the invoice to you, but deliver the goods to a third person, got it? I raise invoice to you, I deliver the goods to the third person. You cannot take ITC because you have not received the goods. One of the conditions says that you should have actually received the goods, but you did not receive the goods, so you cannot take ITC. Even the third person cannot take ITC. Why? Because I have given invoice to you even though they received the goods. So you must be in the possession of tax paid document. The third person is not in the possession of tax paid document, so they also cannot take ITC. To avoid this scenario only, they brought this deemed delivery concept. The date on which I deliver the goods to the third person, it is deemed that I delivered the goods to you. Got it? That is, the date on which shipping address has received the goods or services, it is deemed that the billing address has received the goods or service and the billing address can take the ITC. It is not only in case of goods, even this point is applicable in case of services. Say for example, your chartered accountant paid your coaching fees. Now in that case, can the invoice be raised to your chartered accountant? Can he take the ITC? Yes. The day on which you receive the services, it is deemed that your CA is receiving the services and they can take ITC with respect to the coaching fees. Okay. Of course, it's a hypothetical situation, but I'm just telling if that is there, can he take ITC with respect to that? Yes, definitely he can take because this deemed delivery concept is applicable where goods are delivered to any person or service are provided to any person on the instructions of the recipient. In the CA example, who is the recipient? CA is the recipient and to whom the service is provided? Article students. But very important condition here is that it should be in the course or furtherance of business. Means article student should be still in the articleship. 
if the students are not in the article shape it will not be in the course or furtherance of business of the chartered accountant are you understanding this so when goods are delivered to any person or service provided to any person on the instructions of the recipient the date on which such person has received the goods or services is deemed that the recipient has received the goods or service and they can take it easy in other words in case of bill to ship to transactions billing address can avail it easy next point if goods are received in lots or installments when the it easy can be availed on receipt of last lot or installment it easy can be availed what does it mean for example you are asking me you are placing an order with me to manufacture and send 100 iphone 15 pro max okay but i could not manufacture because what i thought like anyhow it is the same iphone only just i made the change in name but then also people are like idiots are purchasing i never thought this many orders and all will come so what i did i manufactured some 100 pieces but in total you are placing an order you are one dealer you are only placing 100 so i have to do the production now i need to do the production so first week i gave you like first month i gave you 30 pieces next month i gave you 40 pieces thereafter next month i gave you 30 pieces now in this case when you can take itc even though i am giving you delivery in lots but it is against a single invoice so therefore can you take itc proportionately no you have to wait till the third month only when i complete the last delivery then only you can take itc itc shall be availed only on receipt of last lot or installment if it is with respect to a single invoice instead if i give you three invoices first i gave you 30 na for that invoice number 1 next i gave you 40 for that invoice number 2 next i gave you 30 for that invoice number 3 then can you take a proportionate itc yes okay listen the next point that we have is reversal of itc for non payment of consideration to supplier what happens here is that supplier has raised invoice to the recipient and recipient has availed the itc now recipient has not made payment to the supplier then whatever itc availed by the recipient should be reversed what is the time limit within which payment should be made to supplier 180 days from the date of invoice if recipient has not made payment what is the meaning of payment here value plus tax to the supplier within 180 days from the date of invoice then so much of the itc availed by the recipient proportionate to the amount not paid to the supplier needs to be reversed along with interest at 18% per annum but this interest 18% per annum will be computed from when again same wherever itc interest computation is involved it should be from the date of utilization of itc till the date of reversal or payment so 18% per annum from the first date after date of utilization of itc till the date of reversal however interest is not payable if availed itc is not utilized suppose if i have wrongly availed some itc and i have not at all utilized when is it called as not utilized means that much balance in itc if i am maintaining in my electronic credit ledger means i have not utilized that itc then interest payment shall not arise so what is this proviso about recipient not made payment to supplier within 180 days from the date of invoice then so much of the itc availed by the recipient needs to be paid if you have balance in itc you reverse if you don't have balance in itc you pay that along with interest at 18% per annum from the date of utilization till the date of reversal and this provision is not applicable in three cases suppose if the transaction is covered under rcm who is having liability to pay gst recipient and in that case 180 days condition is not applicable then supply without consideration in case of transaction which is supply without consideration even then this will not be applicable because there is no consideration from where from recipient will make payment to supplier then payment to third party on behalf of supplier that is under 15 to be recipient incurs an expenditure on behalf of supplier means recipient really making that amount but not to the supplier some other person 
even then 180 days condition no need to check these are the three cases we should not check 180 days condition then after 180 days if the recipient has made payment to the supplier can the recipient re-avail the ITC yes without any time limit but in this process again what is the loss to the recipient interest is the loss ITC can be re-availed as and when payment is made to supplier after 180 days but interest paid cannot be availed as ITC then next one depreciation section 16 subsection 3 if under income tax while computing depreciation under section 32 if GST is also included in the block of assets then we cannot take ITC with respect to that for example asset is 10 lakhs GST is 1 lakh 20 thousand how much should be added in the block 10 lakhs or 11 lakh 20 thousand 10 lakhs should be added if 11 lakh 20 thousand is added that 1 lakh 20 thousand cannot be taken as ITC that is this point then section 16 subsection 4 talks about time limit for availment of ITC similar time limits so what is the time limit for availment of ITC 30th November of succeeding financial year or date of filing annual return whichever is earlier so what are the four cases or five cases where the time limit is same time limit for availment of ITC time limit for issuance of credit note time limit for rectification of GSTR 1 GSTR 3B and GSTR 8 and this time limit is not applicable in case of re-availment of ITC what are the two cases where re-availment will come case number one under section 41 if the supplier has not filed GSTR 3B by 30th September of the succeeding financial year recipient has to reverse the ITC and as and when the supplier files GSTR 3B recipient can re-avail the ITC without any time limit case number two recipient has not made payment to supplier within 180 days from the date of invoice then the recipient should reverse the ITC again as and when recipient made payment to supplier he can re-avail it as ITC without any time limit that is this then in case of debit note don't see the invoice date for determining the time limit see the debit note date only previously we used to check the invoice date now just check the debit note date in case of debit note availment of ITC depends on the debit note date but not the date of invoice related to such debit note so this is about section 16 then section 17 talks about apportionment of credit and blocked credits in that 17 subsection 1 17 subsection 2 and 17 subsection 3 deals with apportionment of credit what does it says simple when you have some invert supplies which is used exclusively in taxable outward supplies can you enjoy the ITC with respect to that yes if you have some invert supply which is exclusively used in exempted or non-business purpose can you take ITC with respect to that no if you have some invert supply used for both taxable and exempted outward supply can we take ITC yes how much ITC we can take proportionate ITC we can take same way when we have some invert supply which is used both for business purpose and non-business purpose can we take ITC yes to what extent we can take proportionate ITC we can take so invert supplies used for outward supply which is taxable or business we can enjoy the ITC invert supply used for exempted outward supply or non-business we cannot enjoy the ITC invert supply used for both taxable and exempted business and non-business we can take proportionate ITC how to take that proportionate ITC is given in rule 42 for inputs and input services and rule 43 in case of capital goods but before that what is the meaning of exempted supplies that is given in section 17 subsection 3 as per 17 subsection 3 there are few transactions which are regarded as exempted supply for the purpose of ITC and meaning of exempted supply we have in two places one under regular GST for payment of GST what is the meaning of exempted three notified as exempted nil rated and non taxable these three are treated as exempted for the purpose of payment of GST whereas for the purpose of availment of ITC these three notified as exempted nil rated non taxable these three are there 
in addition to that some more transactions are there that is supply covered under RCM. Whenever my outward supply is covered under RCM, I will not pay GST, my recipient will pay GST. So on my inward supply, I cannot avail the ITC because it is treated as exempted supply for me. Then next, sale of land, actually sale of land is not a supply, but it will be treated as exempted supply, same way, sale of building. Sale of building also not a supply, but for the purpose of GST, it will be treated as, for the purpose of ITC, it will be treated as exempted supply. Same way, sale of securities. Sale of securities also not a supply, but for ITC purpose, it will be treated as exempted. So, what are the seven points that you need to remember? Notified as exempted, nil rated, non-taxable, supply covered under RCM, sale of land, sale of building, sale of securities, these seven transactions will be treated as exempted supplies for the purpose of computing the ITC and interest, interest on loans, advances, deposits is actually exempted for payment of GST because we don't have to pay GST on that. However, while computing the ITC, interest on loans, advances, deposits will be treated as taxable supplies. This is the exception that we have. Okay. Generally, interest on loans, advances, deposits is exempted. But while computing the ITC, it should be categorized as what supply? Taxable supply. Then, even zero rated supplies, we have two options now for zero rated supplies. Either we will pay GST or don't pay GST. But zero rated supplies will be categorized as what? Taxable supplies only. So, this will be useful for practical question computation, there we will be coming across this. Now, in case of sale of land, sale of building and sale of securities, actually there is no supply, it is not a supply, but it is treated as exempted supply. Then what should be taken as its value? In case of land and building, we will take stamp duty value. In case of securities, we take 1% of the sale value of such security. Understood? Next, we are moving on to rule 42 that is manner of availment of ITC with respect to inputs and input services. So this rule 42 needs to be strictly followed for the purpose of computation of ITC on inputs and input services. How much is the proportionate ITC we avail on inputs and input services? and on capital goods is given in rule 42 and rule 43. Rule 42 is applicable for inputs and input services. What does rule 42 says? First, we need to see the total ITC on invert supplies and that will be denoted as T. And this total ITC on invert supplies, we need to segregate into four. That is T1, T2, T3, T4. What is that T? Total ITC on invert supply used for non-business purpose will be put in T1 and we have some invoices which is used for exempted outward supply that we will put in T2. We have some invoices which are blocked credit that we will put in T3 and we have some invoices which are partly used for like which is used for taxable or business purpose that we will put in T4. If still some invoices we are not able to segregate means it is commonly used for business and non-business and used for exempted and taxable. Those invoices are only called as common credit. So this is the point first we need to remember. So total invoices say for example T is 40 lakhs. So we have 40 lakhs GST paid on invert supplies okay. Out of this 40 lakhs how much of the invoices are used for non-business purpose, say 5 lakhs. And then how much of these invoices is used for exempted supplies, say 2, 3 lakhs used for exempted. And how much is blocked credit, 7 lakhs is blocked credit. And how much of this is used fully for taxable and business purpose, say 15 lakhs is used for taxable and business purpose. Now the remainder is known as common credit. So what is a common credit? 40 minus 5 lakhs minus 3 lakhs minus 7 lakhs minus 15 lakhs. So the common credit will be 
10 lakhs. Understood? T. T is what? Total ATC on invert supplies minus T1. T1 is non-business purpose. T2 is so used for exempted. T3 is block the credit. T4 is taxable and business purpose. The remaining is known as common credit. Now, out of this, which credits we can take as ITC in our GSTR 3B? So, can 5 lakhs be taken as ITC? No. Why we cannot take 5 lakhs as ITC? It is used for non-business purpose. First, we should not avail this as ITC at all. Then, next, what about 3 lakhs? Can we avail this as ITC? No, because it is used for exempted. Can the 7 lakhs be taken as ITC? No, because it is blocked credit. But remaining ITC we can take. So, what is the ITC that can be availed in 3B? 40 minus 5 minus 3 minus 7 that is that is 25 lakhs we can avail as ITZ in GSTR 3B. What is this 25 lakhs? Nothing but this 15 lakhs and this 10 lakhs got it exclusively used for taxable and common credit is only this 25 lakhs. First you take this 25 lakhs. After taking this 25 lakhs then you need to reverse common credit attributable to exempted. How to calculate common credit attributable to exempted? Common credit into exempted turnover divided by total turnover. So therefore E by F, C2 into E by F, common credit into exempted turnover divided by total turnover. Say for example, 10 lakhs is the common credit and exempted turnover is 500 lakhs and total turnover is say 1500 lakhs then how much will be the common credit attributable to exempted supplies 10 lakhs into 5 by 15 that is 3 lakh 33333 is common credit attributable to exempted supplies then suppose we have some invoices which are partly used for business and partly used for non business how we can apportion we cannot apportion so they are asking us to follow one standard what is that out of the entire common credit, you take 5% as used for non-business purpose. So, 10 lakhs common credit into 5% is how much? 50,000. So, what they are telling is that this 33 lakh 33,333 and this 50,000 will be reversed as ITZ. You understood or not? So, how much ITZ we avail? 25 lakhs. How much ITC we will reverse? 3,33 plus 50 that is 3,83,333. Remaining is called as the net eligible ITC. ITC availed in 3B is C1 and minus reversal. What is the reversal? D1 and D2. How to compute D1? Common credit into E by F. D2 is common credit into 5%. So therefore, D1 and D2 if you reduce, the balance is known as net eligible ITC. So you need to remember this template. What is that? T refers to total ITC on invert supplies minus T1 used for non-business purpose minus T2 used for exempted outward supply and T3 used for block the credits. So the remainder is known as C1 that is credit availed in GSTR 3B. So T refers to total ITC on invert supplies minus T1 out of this ITC which is used for non-business minus T2 out of this how much is used for exempted minus T3 that is out of this T how much is blocked the credit. Now the remainder is known as C1. What is C1? ITC availed in GSTR 3B. ITC availed in GSTR 3B and from this C1 you need to reduce T4. So, T4 is what? Exclusive used for taxable. Now, the remainder is what? C2. What is C2? Common credit. But this common credit fully we cannot enjoy. We need to compute D1 and D2. What is D1? Common credit attributable to exempted supplies. So, E by F. And what is D2? Common credit attributable to non-business purpose. That is 5%. So, now what is the ITC availed in 3B? C1. What is the ITC reversed in 3B? ITC reversed in GSTR 3B that is D1 and D2. So what will be taken as the net eligible ITC? Net eligible ITC is C1 minus D1 minus D2 will be taken as the net eligible ITC. Okay. 
So if you remember this template, easily you will be able to arrive at the answer. Okay, and this C2 into 5% we need to do only if we have information in the question that we have some invoices which are partly used for business and partly used for non-business purpose. If we don't have that information about invoices which are partly used for business or non-business, the C2 into 5% we don't have to do. And same way, if you are able to segregate all invoices in these four boxes itself, then the common credit will not arise. Means you know how much is exactly used for business, non-business how much is exactly is for taxable and exempted then you can segregate in these boxes itself so the question of you know common credit shall not arise understood yes now whether this computation we need to do it every month yes again at the end of the financial year also we need to do why because whatever we compute every month is on a provisional basis because the actual amounts may differ. I may not know every month how much is used for exempted and how much is used for taxable, how much is used for business and how much is used for non-business. But only at the end of the financial year, I will get a clarity as to how much is used for business and non-business. So month on month, we need to do this computation. Again, at the end of the financial year, we need to do if there is any difference, that difference we need to reverse along with interest. See this. D1 and D2 will be computed for the whole financial year by taking exempted turnover and aggregate turnover for the whole financial year. If this amount is more than the amount already added to output tax liability every month, the differential amount will be added to liability along with interest at 18%. What is that? Sir, month on month, I have computed the D1 and D2 and reversed it. Say, its total is 10 lakhs, but actually at the end of the year, I will compute that is 12 lakhs. How much I reverse? 10 lakhs. How much I should have reversed? 12 lakhs. What is the shortfall? 2 lakhs. That 2 lakhs, I have to pay by when so that I will not have any interest by 31st March by end of that financial year otherwise from 1st April of the succeeding financial year I have to pay interest at 18% per annum are you understanding this every place in input tax today we see the interest provision because GST department has started a new company called GST FinCorp so wherein this interest will be the source of income for them what are the three major sources of income tax Income tax, indirect tax, interest, you understood or none. So that's why everywhere interest you will be seeing. So at the rate of 18% from 1st April of the succeeding financial year till the date of payment. Sir, what if it is the reverse? What I have reversed is 10 lakhs. What I am supposed to reverse is 8 lakhs. The 2 lakhs will they give interest? Nothing. Nothing. They will not give. The 2 lakhs you can re-avail as ITC, but the 2 lakhs interest and all you will not get. If this amount is less than the amount added to output tax liability every month, the additional amount paid has to be claimed back as credit in the return of any month till September of the succeeding financial year. Clear here? Yeah? So this is about rule 42. Okay. So in the previous session, we have seen rule 42 in input tax credit. Now have a look into rule 43. Rule 42 and rule 43 deals with the manner of availment and reversal of ITC in case of inputs, input services and capital goods. Rule 42 is for inputs and input services. Rule 43 is for capital goods. Capital goods are divided into three. Capital goods which are used exclusively for taxable supply and business purpose we can take itc with respect to that capital goods which are exclusive for non-business purpose or exempted supply we cannot take itc with respect to that this is common even for inputs input services also if inputs are used for taxable and business purpose we can take itc if inputs and input service used for exempted or non-business purpose we cannot take itc this point though common let it be inputs input service or capital goods but what differs in capital goods is that when capital goods are used both for taxable as well as exempted are used both for business and non-business 
then we can take full ITC with respect to capital good thereafter. So we have to do the proportionate reversal. But in inputs and input service, we followed a different manner. Common credit into exempted turnover divided by total turnover, then common credit into 5%. But that is not required in case of capital goods. So take the full credit on the capital goods. Say for example, you are purchasing capital goods which is 10 lakhs. On that, the GST will be 12%. Now, what is the ITC that we will avail now? ITC will be 1,20,000. So, 10 lakhs into 12%, that is 1,20,000 we avail as ITC. And thereafter, this ITC, we need to check what is the monthly ITC. So, monthly ITC, so how many months will be taken as the life of the capital goods? The life of the capital goods shall be considered as 60 months. And if the question says any other period, we can take that period also. Suppose if the question says 48 months or the question says 36 months, we can take that also because the words used in the law is up to 60 months. But if the question is not given anything, you take the life of the capital goods as 60 months only. Then only your answer will match with the suggested answer. So 1,20,000 divided by 60. So the monthly ATC will come to 2,000 rupees. Now this monthly ATC, we need to do reversal every month over 60 months. How many months we consider as life of capital goods? 60 months. So every month what we need to do? We need to reverse the ITC proportionate to exempted supply. So what is the reversal? Reversal will be 2000 rupees into what is the exempted turnover of that month? Say exempted turnover of that month is 20 lakhs and total turnover of that month is 40 lakhs. So which means 1000 rupees will be ITC that should be reversed. So again, I am repeating the steps that is involved. First, we need to avail 100% ITC. 100% ITC and that will be transferred to electronic credit ledger. So, 1,20,000 we have taken. Compute monthly ITC. So, ITC availed divided by 60 months. So, here assumption life of the capital goods is 5 years or 60 months. So, the monthly ITC will be 1,20,000 divided by 60 that will be 2,000. For the next 60 months from the date of purchase, Compute monthly ITC attributable to exempted supply. How to calculate that monthly ITC attributable to exempted supply? So, monthly ITC into exempted turnover divided by total turnover of that month. Like this, how many months we need to do the computation? 60 months we need to do computation. And this 1000 rupees will be added to the liability. Initially, we have taken 1,20,000. Every month, we do the reversal over a period of 60 months. On the top of this, we need to even compute the interest. But this interest is given as from the date of availment of ITC only. They have not modified this rule 43 yet. But for your CA final exam, this interest computation is not at all tested in exam. Even in study material, this interest computation is not given. So even if you avoid it is okay, no issue. But what is that interest that they gave in the rule is that 18% per annum from the date of availment till the date of addition to liability. But you can safely ignore this point also for CA final exam, leave it. Just you need to reverse the ITC and the proportionate ITC that will only be tested. For how many months I need to do the reversal? I need to do reversal for 60 months. Suppose if the life of capital goods is considered as 36 months, then for 36 months only I need to do the reversal. Suppose within this 60 months, if the asset is sold, should I do the reversal? Not required. The asset itself is not with you. Then what is the point in doing the reversal with respect to that? Then what will happen when the asset is sold within that 60 months? So within this 60 months, asset is sold anyhow we are going to pay GST under 18 subsection 6 so under 18 subsection 6 the GST will be payable on disposal of capital goods or sale of capital goods on which ITC is available so anyhow there we are going to pay so for the balance let's say for example we used it for 48 months remaining 12 months we have not used we sold it now anyhow we are going to pay some GST on the sale of capital goods that's the reason why for Baki 12 months for the balance 12 months we don't have to do any reversal then the above procedure is not required from the month in which capital goods are sold as GST is payable under section 18 subsection 6 due to that reason what is it GST payable under 18 subsection 6 which says that so much of the IT is availed minus 5% for every quarter or part thereof or GST on sale value whichever is higher. 
that information you can see in page number 71 what is the gst payable under AT section 6 when capital goods are supplied on which itc is available first of all 18 subsection 6 is applicable if you have purchased some capital goods and at the time of purchase of that capital goods you availed the itc now that capital goods are sold then gst payable will be highest of the following what is that itc avail minus 5% for every quarter or part thereof from when to when from the date of invoice till the date of supply or b gst payable on the value of capital goods determined under section 50 whichever is higher for example i am purchasing some capital goods i am purchasing some capital goods and the value of capital goods purchased capital goods purchased capital goods purchased on 10 4 2020 for 10 lakhs excluding gst excluding gst at 12 percent so now what happens is that we would have availed the itc 1 lakh 20 thousand and then capital goods capital goods sold on 25 12 2021 for 6 lakhs again 6 lakhs excluding gst at 12 percent now this is the scenario so we are purchasing capital goods at the time of purchase of capital goods we would have paid the gst the gst paid would have been availed as itc now this capital goods are sold then gst payable under section 18 subsection 6 what is that 18 subsection 6 is so much of the itc availed what is that itc that is availed 1 lakh 20 thousand minus 5 percent for every quarter or part there from the date of purchase till the date of sale what is the date of purchase 10 4 2020 and date of sale is 25 12 2021 for every quarter or part thereof we need to take calendar quarter calendar quarter in the sense like in that quarter even if one day comes also so 10 4 2020 is april may june quarter so april may june and even if one day is there in that april may june we will count it as one quarter then next second quarter june july august september then october november december so for 2020 it is three quarters again for 2021 it will be four quarters so four plus three seven quarters seven quarters to five percent so one lakh twenty thousand minus thirty five percent or b b will be gst on sale value what is the sale value six lakhs 6 lakhs into 12 percent so therefore how much is 1 lakh 20 thousand minus 35 percent 78 thousand and 6 lakhs into 12 percent will be 72 thousand so what will be the gst payable whichever is higher is the gst payable that is 78 thousand the logic is simple that is you have used 1 lakh 20 thousand as itc and only for seven quarters you can enjoy remaining itc you should not enjoy because asset is not with you so that much proportionate itc you need to pay are subject to the condition that the sale value into gst rate what if in this case the sale value is not six lakhs but the sale value is eight lakhs then what would have happened this six lakhs into 12 percent will become eight lakhs into 12 percent eight lakhs into 12 percent is what ninety six thousand so whichever is higher will become 96000 so that will be the gst that is payable so this is how we compute as per 18 subsection 6 that is so much of the itc available minus 5% for every quarter or part thereof from the date of purchase till the date of sale or gst on sale value whichever is higher so that's how we need to do the computation with respect to this so that's the reason why what they are telling for the balance life you don't have to do any reversal because already you completed the reversal for you know the period for which you have already used so remaining period anyhow that will undergo payment of gst as per 18 subsection 6. And next there are two special situations that will arise here at the time of initial purchase i am using it for cg1 cg1 means what i am using it for taxable purpose and at a later point of time i am using it for cg it became cg2 means i am using it for both taxable and exempted so what should i do that is initial purchase cg1 and at a later point of time cg2 at the time when i have already purchased initially i used it for what purpose taxable 
means already I would have availed the ITC. So should I avail the ITC again now? No need because at the time of purchase itself, I have availed the ITC and I have utilized it, used it also. Now again, don't take the ITC, just it has become the common capital goods. So ITC already availed at the time of purchase. So no need to avail the common credit, but we need to do the monthly computation. Why we need to do monthly computation? Because for the remaining period, you are using it for both taxable as well as exempted. Say for example, you purchase capital goods on 1-4-2020. So the life of the capital goods will be what? 5 years. 5 years means what? 31st March 2025 is the life of the capital goods. 5 years. So 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 5 years is the life of the capital goods. Say exactly somewhere like uh, 31st March 2023, you are using it for taxable, fully you are using it for taxable and thereafter you are using it for taxable plus exempted means you are using it for common. Then in that case, what is the number of months for which you have already used it for taxable? So 2020, 21, 21, 22, 22, 23, 3 years means 36 months you are using it for taxable and balance 24 months you are using it for exempted. So what they are telling, already you availed the ITC at the time of purchase itself, that is 1-4-2020 itself, you have availed the ITC. So to take the ITC now. Why no need to take the ITC now because already it has been availed. But what you need to do now is that for the remaining 24 months you need to do the reversal. Why you need to do the reversal? Because you are using it for taxable as well as exempted. So monthly ITC same no change because the life of the capital goods will not change. The life of the capital goods will be taken as 60 months. So divided by 60. So monthly ITC will be original ITC divided by 60. But the reversal that we do is only for the balance life. That is proportionate reversal from the date of conversion for the balance useful life. Means for this 24 months only we need to do the reversal. That is this aspect. Then another case that is initial purchase. I am using for CG3 means initially I purchased same scenario I have initially purchased it on 1-4-2020 and the life of the capital goods will be taken as 31st March 2025 5 years somewhere on 31st March 2023 initially I purchased for you know a common initially sorry initially purchased for exempted let's take that scenario initially I am using it for exempted supplies and now I am using it for taxable and exempted then what I need to do in this scenario so at the time of initial purchase so I would have taken ITC or not taken ITC not taken ITC because I am using it for exempted so initially when I purchase the capital goods and I am using it for exempted I should not take the ITC so I would not have taken ITC on 1-4-2020 why? Because I am using it for exempted. So ITC availed or ITC not availed? ITC not availed. Then when we will take the ITC? Take the ITC on 31st March 2023 because now only you are using it for both taxable and exempted. But that ITC fully you cannot enjoy. Why you cannot enjoy fully? Because for the last 36 months, for the last 36 months, you have used it for what purpose? Exempted. Then you cannot enjoy that. But you can enjoy only for the 24 months that too for 24 months fully you cannot enjoy so you have to do the proportionate reversal so what is that they are telling the date when it became common capital goods you avail the ITC so see the step number one ITC not availed at the time of purchase so it should be availed now that is nothing but the original GST paid you will avail as ITC then for the last period that is past period so you have used it only for exempted for that period you reverse the ITC how much you reverse fully you reverse proportionately for that period. Why? Because that period fully used for exempted. So ineligible ITC to be reversed for the period it is used for exempted. So how much you need to reverse? Total GST paid into 5% into number of quarters are part thereof from the date of purchase till the date of conversion. So which means how many quarters you convert that 3 years into number of quarters. So that will be coming to you know 4 plus 4 plus 4. 12 quarters so 12 quarters into 5 percent 
12 quarters into 5% means what? So that is 60% you remove. So why? Because that 60% you should not take. Reason for the last 3 years, you are using it only for exempted purpose. So don't take 60% you reverse. Then what is the remaining that you have? So life 24 months. For the remaining 24 months, you do the proportionate reversal from the date of conversion for the balance useful life. What is that balance useful life? 24 months. So we need to do that calculation. Okay. So first, you take the ITC in the month of conversion. And for the past period, you do the reversal because you are using it fully for exempted. Thereafter, monthly ATC will not change because the total life of the capital goods will be always taken as 60 months. And you need to do the proportionate reversal from the date of conversion for the balance useful life. So, this is about rule 43. Okay. Then, look into 17 subsection 4, special provision for availment of ITC by banking company and financial institution including NBFC. As per 17 subsection 4, a bank or a financial institution or NBFC will have partly taxable supplies and partly exempted supplies. Why? Because the interest on loans, advances or deposits is exempted and any other consideration received by the bank will be taxable. So naturally for a bank, Always there will be taxable supplies and exempted supplies. In that case, what bank should do? So, they should take the proportionate ITC. But proportionate ITC is a cumbersome work for the bank because they need to follow rule 42, rule 43, all those things. Instead, they have been given a special option. That is, instead of following the proportionate reversal method, they can go for ad hoc reversal method. Option 1 avail proportionate ITC or option to avail 50% of the eligible ITC. So, these are the two options available to a bank, financial institution, NBFC, but not for others. This is given only for them. Option 1 is what? Proportionate ITC, which means they will follow regular rule 42 and 43 what we have seen so far, whereas option 2 ad hoc. Ad hoc means whatever is the total ITC, in the total eligible ITC, 50% they will take, remaining 50% they will not take. So that is option 2. But they need to decide this option in the beginning of financial year because option 1's exercise cannot be withdrawn during remaining part of the financial year. So every year beginning itself they should decide whether they need to go for option 1 or option 2. In case of option 2, so they are exclusively using something for non-business purpose and blocked credits that should not be availed and 50% should be computed on remaining ITC including used for exempted supplies and used for taxable supplies. So, let us try to understand as to how it is going to differ. For example, we have certain invert supplies used for taxable, invert supplies for taxable. Invert supplies for taxable. So, the GST component in this is say 1 lakh. Then, invert supplies for exempted. Invert supplies for exempted. So, that will be 50,000. Then, invert supplies which are common. Invert supplies for common, both taxable and exempted. That is lakhs. Now, if you go for option 1, what will happen you know in option 1? In option 1, with respect to 1 lakh, fully we will take ITC. With respect to 50,000, we will not take ITC. With respect to common, we will take proportionate ITC. Correct? And say the turnover, if you see exempted turnover, that is taxable turnover, taxable turnover is 40 lakhs and exempted turnover, exempted turnover is 60 lakhs. Now, in this case, option 1, what we will do? 1 lakh fully we will take because invert supply is for taxable, fully we will take. Invert supply is for exempted, fully we will not take. Common, what you will do? Proportionate, you will take. What is the proportion of credit that we will take? 40 divided by 100. 40 divided by 100, taxable divided by total, that much we will take. So, therefore, 2 lakhs into 40 by 100 is what? 80,000. So, 1 lakh plus 80,000, 1 lakh 80,000 we will take as credit in option 1. 
whereas in option 2 you know what we will do option 2 we will not divide this way so exclusive used for taxable exclusive used for exclusive and common everything will be considered as common only so which means that how much ITC we will be taking so 1 lakh plus 50,000 plus 2 lakhs so total how much 3 lakh 50,000 3 lakh 50,000 into flat 50 percent what is that 3 lakh 50,000 into 50 percent that is uh, 1 lakh 75,000 we will be taking so that is what we do in option 2 so therefore how we did option 1 the same way we should not do option 2 for computation so that what I have given here in case of option 2 exclusively used for non-business purpose and blocked credits ITC should not be availed but 50% compute on remaining ITC including used for exempted supply and used for taxable supplies so which means fully we will be taking then in case of option 2 restriction of 50% shall not apply to tax paid on supplies made to other registration within the same entity what does it mean in case of invert supply from a percent in case of option 1 we will do the proportionate calculation but in case of option 2 we will not take 50 percent entire 100 percent we will take these are the two differences that we have between option 1 and option 2 first difference is in case of option 1 exclusively for taxable fully we will take exclusively for exempted fully we will not take and common credit we will take proportionately option 1 in option 2 exclusively for taxable exclusively for exempted and common everything we will take into 50 percent second difference is that in case of invert supply from a distinct person option 1 we will take proportionate ITC but option 2 we will be taking full ITC 100 percent ITC we will be taking so no need to reverse 50 percent with respect to invert supply from a distinct person so these are the key points keep in mind so that you know again it is most awaited area on 17 subsection 4 questions are not tested at least in MCQs they will be touching this then the next area that we are seeing is 17 subsection 5 blocked credits blocked credits basically so you have to remember this and it is not given as a standalone question but in different questions like normal computation involved questions and all they will give some purchases which will be like blocked credits on which you should not take the input tax credit standalone question we may not get on this but definitely in 14 marks question this will be connected so motor vehicles related blocked credits are divided into three motor vehicles related blocked credit and then construction related blocked credit and we have other blocked credits these are the three divisions that you need to know first uh, motor vehicles related blocked credit you see motor vehicles divided into three motor vehicles used for transportation of persons vessels and aircrafts and other motor vehicles other motor vehicles always eligible for ITC what are other motor vehicles trucks that is other than used for transportation of persons vessels and aircrafts means trucks lorries bulldozers road rollers cranes etc will be coming under other motor vehicles there is no restriction at all we can always take itc with respect to that then for transporting persons what will come into this category that is buses then two wheelers four wheelers that's cars jeeps so maxi cabs tempo travelers those will come under for transporting persons in that again divide it into two capacity does not exceed 13 while determining the capacity include the driver seat also if the capacity does not exceed 13 our capacity exceeds 13 if the capacity exceeds 13 itc will be available so if the capacity does not exceed 13 then only it is blocked to credit so what are the motor vehicles used for transportation of persons capacity exceeds 13 like buses buses tempo travelers etc and all no restriction itc can be taken whereas if capacity does not exceed 13 we have blocked the credit however in three cases we can take itc even if the capacity does not exceed 13 those are the exceptions if it is for further supply that is i am a dealer i am purchasing the car and i am selling the car car is a motor vehicle for transportation of persons capacity does not exceed 13 but as it is covered under further supply i can take itc with respect to that second exception 
used in the business of transportation of passengers i am having a travel agency i purchase a car and i am using it for giving it on transportation to the customers now in that case car is a motor vehicle for transportation of persons capacity does not exist in but i am using it in the business of transportation of passengers so i can take it easy then for driving schools then also it is available for example there is a driving school which purchased a car and using it for imparting driving to the kids uh, then in that case any person not only kids any person they can impart and a motor vehicle for transportation of persons capacity does not exceed 13 and it is used for driving schools therefore itc available in all other cases itc not available for example a chartered accountant purchased a car name of the business almost all chartered accountants will buy cars in the name of their business only then only they can take section 32 depreciation and they will be getting good benefit also and that's the reason why they will buy it in the name of business but they cannot get itc why because it is a motor vehicle for transportation of persons yes capacity does not exceed 13 yes and is it for further supply no is it used in the business of transportation of passengers no when they go for audit return journey mt they should come so that they can carry few people no no they will not do that and driving schools practical students be learning in that no so therefore it will not coming under these three therefore itc is not available on that then next uh, vessels and aircraft for vessels and aircraft these three exceptions are there plus one more point also is there that is used for transportation of goods further supply used in the business of transportation of passengers driving schools and used for transportation of goods so these are the four exceptional cases first three normal and next one used for transportation of goods in these four cases it is available in other cases it is not available for example reliance industries limited purchased an aircraft for using it to transport their directors from one location to another location now vessels and aircraft is it covered under further supply no is it used in the business of transportation of passengers no is it for imparting driving skills no is it used for transportation of goods no consequently it is not available suppose indigo airlines purchased an aircraft for transportation of passengers so now can they take it is yes because that is covered under used in the business of transportation of passengers then first flight couriers purchase aircraft for transporting the goods courier parcels can they take itc yes because that will come under used for transportation of goods so they can take itc with respect to that and that is about motor vehicles related blocked credit if you buy the motor vehicle then the next part in this itself is that if you are receiving any service in relation to motor vehicles what are the services in relation to motor vehicles repair and maintenance service insurance service or servicing servicing means authorized service station service hiring renting or leasing of motor vehicles these four services in relation to motor vehicle if motor vehicle purchased is eligible for itc then on this four service also itc available if motor vehicle purchase this not eligible for itc on this fourth service also itc not available that is we discussed a chartered accountant who purchased a car he cannot take itc on the car purchase now for that car he takes insurance and along with insurance he paid gst can the gst be taken as credit no because as car is not eligible for itc so even insurance service also not eligible for itc got it suppose if there is a ola driver who purchases a car used in the business of transportation of passengers he can take itc with respect to the car now he received repair and maintenance service on the gst paid can be taken as credit yes because as car is eligible for itc so therefore repair and maintenance also eligible for itc then a company purchased the bus for using it in the business like for using it for transport of their employees and the capacity of the bus exceeds 13 so whether itc available on the bus purchase yes capacity exceeds 13 is not a block credit itc available now instead of buying the bus they took the bus on rental basis and they paid the rent along with gst can they take itc with respect to that yes as the bus purchased is eligible for itc hiring renting and leasing of motor vehicle also eligible for itc a company purchased a car for transporting its employees can they take itc on the car purchase no because car capacity does 
cannot exceed 13. It is not covered under three exceptions. So they cannot take ITC. Now instead of taking the, buying the car, if they take car on rent, rent a cap service, can they take ITC? No. As the car purchased is not eligible for ITC, even hiring, renting and leasing of the car also not eligible for ITC. So four services, hiring, renting and leasing, authorized service station, repairs and maintenance and insurance services. These four service in relation to motor vehicle. If motor vehicle is eligible for ITC, these four service also GST paid eligible for ITC. If motor vehicle not eligible for ITC, this four service also GST paid cannot be taken as ITC. Then, while determining the capacity whether driver seat should be included or not, yes, driver seat should be included. And further supply includes even sale of motor vehicles or renting of motor vehicles also. What does it mean? I am purchasing a car and I am giving it on rental basis. So will it come under further supply? Yes, because supply does not mean sale only. Sale, barter, exchange, license, rent, everything will come under supply. So therefore, I am into the business of renting of motor vehicles. I purchased a motor vehicle, car. Can I take ITC? Yes, because it will come under further supply. That's what I have given here. Further supply includes sale of motor vehicles or renting of motor vehicles. Then, Repair, insurance and servicing of motor vehicles received by a general insurance company is always eligible for ITC. What does it mean? Say you purchase one uh, premium car and uh, you wanted to test as to how much speed it will go and all. So you went in some 200, 300 kilometers. Okay. And uh, what happened? You met with an accident. When you met with an accident, new car. Na? So no problem. Safety and all. Proper safety is there. Usually NCAP will do the testing, but you did the testing, nothing wrong in that. And so therefore what happened to the car completely, it got demolished, destroyed. And now, so you are taking that car to the car showroom and service center. They do the repairs and this repairs, you will not pay. Why? New car, insurance is there, bumper to bumper insurance, insurance company will make payment. Now can insurance company take ITC with respect to this repairs? Yes. The restriction is not there for the insurance company. Repairs, insurance and servicing of motor vehicles received by a general insurance company is always eligible for ITC. They can take ITC with respect to that. Then hiring or renting or leasing of motor vehicles as a statutory obligation by employer to employee is also eligible for ITC. What does it mean? Generally, I gave an example. A motor car purchased by a company for transporting its employees, they cannot take ITC because motor vehicle is capacity not exceeding 13 and it is not coming under exception. They cannot take ITC. So the car, if they take on rent also, they cannot take ITC. However, if the cap facility is mandated under government law or any statutory obligation, then in that case, can they take ITC with respect to the rent cap services? Yes. So if it is statutory obligation under any law for which they are taking this hiring, renting or leasing of motor vehicles, don't check anything. Always ITC is available. Then ambulance and caravan are not motor vehicles for transportation of persons because ambulance and caravan are designed for specific purpose. Ambulance is for providing first aid during the travel and caravan is for providing short term accommodation. These two cannot be used as motor vehicles for transporting persons whereas it will come under other motor vehicles therefore ITC will be available. Then the second part in the block the credits is construction related block the credit that is any service received by a builder or that is any service received including construction service, interior decoration service, any service received for construction of an immobile property, including works contract service or goods purchase for construction of an immobile property is blocked credit. So what are the three blocked credits that we have in relation to construction of immobile property? Any service received for construction of immobile property, works contract service received for construction of immobile property and any goods purchased for construction of immobile property is a blocked credit. We cannot take ITC with respect to that. However, there are three exceptions where we can take ITC. The above discussion is not applicable to supplier. Means what? Suppose if I am a contractor, I received them, I purchased some goods for doing the construction of your house. Can I take ITC with respect to that? Yes. The restriction is only to the owner of the property. Suppose if you buy those goods, can you take ITC? No. 
even though you are registered you cannot take itc because it's a block the credit so therefore the restriction is only to the owner of the property not for the supplier so builders whenever they are purchasing cement bricks or building material or if they receive any services they can definitely take itc unless otherwise their outward supply is not residential taxable at 1.5% or 7.5% without ITC. Usually sale of building by promoter or builder when covered under supply either it will be taxable at 1.5% or 7.5% or it will be taxable at 12% or 18%. If it is taxable at 1.5, 7.5 usually residential properties, residential units will be taxable at this rate and they cannot take ITC with respect to that because these rates are without ITC. So even though it is not blocked credit, they cannot take ITC with respect to that. Whenever they are paying GST at 12% or 18% on commercial constructions, construction of roads, construction of bridges, tunnels, etc. and all, the rate of GST will be 12% or 18% and that is with ITC. Now can they take ITC on their invert supply? Yes. Otherwise, it is blocked credit, they cannot, they can take ITC. So, ITC available on invert supplies other than those blocked credit. So, what is that we have understood from this? If I am a builder, I purchase some material used for construction, so I can take ITC unless otherwise the rate of GST is 1.5% or 7.5%. Okay. Whereas the owner of the property who receives any service for construction or who purchases the material for construction, he cannot take ITC with respect to that. Then next one, construction of plant and machinery even though immovable, so we can take ITC. Generally, construction of immobile property, we cannot take ITC. What if that immobile property is plant and machinery? For example, construction of lifts and escalators in a building. Lifts and escalators in a building is immovable structures, but they are plant and machinery. But even for that, we can take ITC. Yes, we can take ITC. There is no restriction. So therefore, the restriction is mainly for what? Land and buildings. That is buildings only. And then plant and machinery excludes telecommunication towers and pipelines laid outside factory. That is telecommunication tower construction or pipelines. If we receive any services or material, we cannot take ITC. So therefore, plant and machinery other than telecommunication towers and pipelines laid outside factory. Third point, suppose if construction expenditure is charged to P&L, we can take ITC with respect to that. Usually construction expenditure will be capitalized. Suppose if I charge it to P&L means what? It is renovation expenditure. So can I take ITC with respect to that? Yes, there is no restriction. Can I in the sense owner of the property? Okay. So first point is what? If supplier is receiving these services, first before that, what are the blocked credits? Any service received for construction of immobile property, including works contract service or goods purchased for construction of immobile property is blocked credit. However, we have first exception. What is that? If these three are received by a supplier of service, not the owner of the property, they can take ITC. Second exception. If the owner of the property is using this for construction of plant and machinery other than telecommunication towers or pipelines laid outside, they can take ITC. If the owner of the property is charging this construction expenditure to P and L, then also he can take ITC with respect to that. That is these three exceptions. Then other blocked credits, membership of a club, health and fitness center is a blocked credit. That is whenever we take membership of any club, health or fitness center, we cannot take ITC with respect to that. Any, mem any membership that can be a gym membership or a fitness center membership or any club memberships, etc. Even though it may be business expenditure. So models and celebrities will be taking some gym memberships for the purpose of maintaining their fitness and that is required for their business purpose. That is their profession. So therefore on this, can the GST paid be taken as credit? No, because it's a blocked credit. Same way, chartered accountants will take membership of some social clubs. On that, they will pay GST. And the GST paid can be taken as credit. No, even though it is a business expenditure, they cannot take ITC with respect to that. Only one exception we have. Suppose if it is mandated under any law, and for that, if they have taken, that to employer has taken the membership, then the ITC will be available. See this. 
provided by employer to employee under a statutory obligation. Say for example, if the government of a state mandates a organization to take membership of a particular social club on behalf of their employees, then in that case under that mandatory obligation or statutory obligation, if the employer has taken the membership and pay some GST, he can take it easy. Otherwise, generally membership of a club health and fitness center will be blocked credits. Then second, travel benefits to employees on vacation. An employee is going on a vacation, say some uh, tour or a family tour or honeymoon etc. But that expenditure is borne by the employer. Now employer is spending the tour amount of the employee. Now in that case, can employer take ITC with respect to that? No, because it is not for business visit but it is on the vacation. Employees on vacation. What if the employee is going on a business visit and the expenditure is paid by the employer? Can the employer take ITC with respect to that? Yes. And what if there is a director who is not an employee of the company going on a vacation and that expenditure is borne by the company? Can the company take ITC with respect to that? Yes. Because the restriction is only to the employees. Suppose if you have done the statutory audit of a company and the company is so much happy about your statutory audit report. So then in that case, they have sponsored you one uh, you know, tour package and uh, therefore whatever may, expenditure that they incurred, can they take ITC? Of course, yes, because statutory auditor is never employee of the company. So therefore, they can take ITC. So therefore, the block the credit is only for the employees, not for others. And we have an exception again here also that is statutory obligation. Suppose if employer is incurring that expenditure to the employees under a statutory obligation. So under a statutory obligation, they have to mandatorily provide the vacation and the travel expenditure should be borne by the employer. In that case, can they take ITC with respect to that? Yes. Then next third one, non-resident taxable person. Who is a non-resident taxable person? A person who come from other state to this state and is not having any physical other country to this country and is not having any physical place of business in this country is known as a non-taxable recipient like non-resident taxable person example so during IPL matches lot of cricketers will be coming from outside India they will be called as NRTPs and these people are not having any physical place of business in India but they will be providing some services in India. They are called as NRTP and NRTPs cannot take any ITC except on import of goods by them. So these cricketers when they are coming, so they will be bringing their bats etc. So that will be imported. So on that import of goods because they may not like to use the bats which are provided by you know like uh, IPL board or some local ones so they wanted their bats only so that is being imported from there and now what our do? so you are importing now pay customs duty along with IGST can that IGST be taken as credit yes that alone be taken as credit no other invert supplies GST paid can be taken as credit sir are they required to register in India of course they are required to register in India and required to pay GST okay so non-resident taxable persons are compulsorily required to get registered and they need to pay GST with respect to that. Now, they have some invert supplies. What are the invert supplies of this NRTP? Maybe they stay in a hotel and for that they will pay some GST. They do travel. So, for the travel also there will be some GST. All those things they cannot take credit. Only one credit they can take that is import of goods by them. Then next one you can see food and beverages, outdoor catering, beauty treatment, including cosmetic, plastic and hair transplantation, life insurance and health insurance. We can put it into three simple words related to food. That is food and beverages, outdoor catering, related to beauty, beauty treatment, including cosmetic surgery, plastic surgery, then related to insurance. That is life insurance and health insurance. You understood? So three invert supplies. What are the three invert supplies? Relating to food, relating to beauty, relating to insurance, okay. Related to food, what and all we have? Food and beverages, then catering. And then related to beauty, beauty treatment, cosmetic surgery, plastic surgery, hair transplantation. Number three, health insurance and life insurance. These are blocked credits. 
However, we have three exceptions. Exception number one, if inward supply and outward supply are same. For example, I am into the business of sale of food and beverages. I purchase food and beverages. Can I take ITC with respect to that? Yes. That is the meaning of inward supply, outward supply are same. Then, inward supply is part of composite or mixed outward supply. That is, I am into the business of transportation of passengers by airways. I provide food and beverages to my passengers and I buy the food and beverages. So, inward supply is part of the outward supply, correct or not? Inward supply may not be exactly in outward supply, but inward supply is part of outward supply. So, therefore, I can take ITC with respect to that. Then, suppose if it is under a statutory obligation provided by employer to employee, example, as per Factories Act, mandatorily employer should provide food to the workers. Because of that, if they receive outdoor catering service, can they take ITC with respect to that? Yes. Generally, outdoor catering is blocked credit, but under a statutory obligation, if they are receiving it, they can take ITC with respect to that. These are the three exceptions. Then next, uh, balance we have. Suppose if you are making purchase from a person opting for composition scheme, you cannot take ITC with respect to that. Moreover, first of all, whenever you are making purchase from a person opting for composition scheme, he should not charge GST to you. Okay. Even if he charges GST to you, you cannot take ITC with respect to that. Then if you are buying anything for personal consumption, you cannot take ITC, which is already there in section 16 conditions for availment of ITC. The invert supply should be used or intended to be used in the course or furtherance of business. Then next, goods lost, stolen, destroyed or written off are disposed of by way of gifts or free samples. I am purchasing some goods and the goods got destroyed or the goods are lost, stolen. So, I cannot take ITC with respect to that. It may be natural reasons or abnormal reasons. It may be theft or it may be accidents like fire accidents or it may be, you know, floods, earthquake, etc. Any reason, if the purchased goods are lost, stolen, destroyed, I cannot take ITC. Even if the purchased goods are given as gifts or free samples also, I cannot take ITC with respect to that. Suppose... If the gifts or free samples are treated as supply under 71C, then ITC need not be you know, reversed with respect to that invert supplies. What does it mean? There is an employer who is purchasing a uh, phone, iPhone, which is of some 80,000 rupees and that iPhone he is giving as a gift to the employee. Is it supply? Yes, because gift by employer to employee exceeding 50,000 rupees per annum per employee is supply. So, therefore, on purchase of this iPhone, can the ITC be taken? Yes. So, even though purchased goods given as gifts are free samples, ITC not available. But what is the exception to that? If the same gift or free sample constitutes supply under 71C, you can enjoy the ITC with respect to that. Just remember this iPhone example given by employer to employee. Suppose if the employer has given one Android mobile which is of some 40,000 rupees to the employee and that 40,000 mobile also employer will be purchasing. Will it become supply? No. Because as the value of gift does not exceed 50,000 per annum per employee, consequently it is not a supply. So therefore, can they take ITC with respect to that Android mobile purchase? No. They cannot take ITC with respect to that because the gift or free sample is not a supply. Then next, if GST is paid under section 74 or 129 or 130 or any other recovery proceedings, such GST is not matched ITC, it cannot be availed. What does it mean? For example, I collected GST from you. You are my recipient, I am your supplier. I collected GST from you and I did not pay to government. I suppressed the transaction, I evaded the tax, I did not pay to government and GST department conducted audit and they identified that I have evaded and they recovered it from me using section 74 demand and recovery or section 129 and 130 search and seizure. Now in that case whatever tax that they have recovered from me, can you take ITC? Definitely no because am I voluntarily disclosing it? No have suppressed which means it will never come in GSTR1 when it is not coming in GSTR1 you cannot take ITC with respect to that but sir logically government is recovering it from the supplier government recovers from supplier that is okay but only matched ITC can be taken now due to that reason if GST is paid by supplier under these sections or any other recovery proceedings it is not a matched ITC and consequently it cannot be availed got it
look into the next area that is section 18 input tax credit in special circumstances section 18 subsection 1 talks about availment of itc on closing stock that is there are four situations where you can avail the ITC on closing stock. Situation 1, that is 18.1a, you are liable to be registered and you make application for registration within 30 days. That is, initially you commence a business. As and when you commence a business, you are not required to register and pay GST. Only when you cross your aggregate turnover threshold limit, you need to register and pay GST. So therefore, as and when your aggregate turnover exceeds the threshold limit at the time only you will register and pay gst so now before the date of that registration liability to registration you have some closing stock on that you would not have taken itc why you would not have taken itc this closing stock pertains to the period for which you were unregistered you would not have taken itc because one of the condition for availment of itc is that only a registered person can avail itc so on this closing stock some itc not taken so now this closing stock only you are using for making outward supply from today and you are liable to pay GST also because you are liable to get registered. So on this closing stock, whatever GST paid that can be taken as ITC. That is the background of this. That is, you are liable to get registered and you made application for registration within 30 days. Now, before the date you are liable to get registered, before the date you are liable to get registered, you have some closing stock. On that closing stock, you have paid some GST. Whether you have taken ITC at that time? No. So now you can take the ITC. That is after registration. What is the meaning of that closing stock? Inputs as such held in stock or inputs in the form of WIP held in stock or inputs in the form of FG held in stock. So whatever GST you paid, you can take as ITC and matching is not required in this case, which means if you have the purchase invoices, on the base of that purchase invoice, GST paid can be taken as credit. Then, next, second situation, if you are voluntarily getting registered, that is, you are not at all liable to register, you commence a business, your aggregate turnover does not exceed threshold limit, but you voluntarily registered. Then, even though your turnover not exceeded threshold limit, if you voluntarily register from the date when you get the registration certificate, you need to pay GST, even though the overall limit that doesn't exceed 20 lakhs but unnecessarily you got registered, pay GST, okay? And from which date you need to pay GST? From the date you got the registration certificate. Now, before the date you get the registration certificate, you will have some closing stock. Or again on that closing stock, a GST paid can be availed as ITZ. What is the meaning of closing stock? Same as previous. That is inputs as such held in stock, inputs in the form of WIP held in stock, and inputs in the form of FG held in stock. That is a person is voluntarily registered, and immediately preceding the date of registration, whatever is the closing stock on that GST paid can be taken as ITC, that is 18.1b. What is common in 18.1a and 18.1b? The meaning of closing stock is common and matching is not required. And what is the difference in situation between 18.1a and 1b? 18.1a, you are liable to get registered and you need to make application within 30 days. Whereas 18.1b, voluntarily you are getting registered. And one more difference is, in case of 18.1a, the closing stock date is immediately before the date you are liable to register. But 18.1b, the closing stock date is immediately before the date of registration. Then 18.1c and 18.1d. 18.1c says, there is a registered person who migrated from composition scheme to normal scheme. And in that case, at the time when he was under composition scheme, whether he will be able to take ITC on the invert supplies? No. When he was under composition scheme, he will not be able to take ITC on invert supply. Now he is migrating to normal scheme. Now can he take ITC? Yes. So again the same, before the date of migration, before the date of migration, whatever is the closing stock, on that closing stock, GST paid can be taken as ITC. But what is the meaning of closing stock here? Inputs as such held in stock. Then inputs in the form of WIP held in stock, inputs contained in FG in stock, except one more case it is capital goods. Even on capital goods also GST paid can be taken as ITC. So that is the extra benefit that we have in 18.1c compared with 18.1a and 1b. But 18.1c matching is required. So which means we should ensure that 
whatever we are making purchases, our supplier is reporting the details of those invoices in GSTR 1 and it is made available to us in GSTR 2B. Then next, 181D. 181D is I am making outward supplies which are basically exempted. So I would not have taken ITC on my inward supply. Now with effect from one day, this exempted supplies becomes taxable, which means I can take the ITC on the closing stock again. So a registered person's exempted supply became taxable. Now before the date of this conversion from where to where, exempted to taxable, I will have some closing stock. On that closing stock, whatever GST paid I can take. That is, that is inputs in stock, inputs contained in WAP in stock, inputs contained in FG in stock and on capital goods I can take ITC. So what is the difference between 1A, 1B versus 1C, 1D? 1A, 1B closing stock is only 3, inputs in stock, inputs in WAP in stock, inputs in FG in stock. Whereas in case of 18, 1C, 1D extra we can take credit on capital goods. 1A, 1B matching not required, 1C, 1D matching is required. Then what is the difference between 1A versus 1B? Here 1A is liable to get registered and made application for registration within 30 days, 1B voluntarily got registered. What is the difference between 1C and 1D? Registered person migrated from composition scheme to normal scheme, registered person's exempted supplies became taxable and the closing stock date also will differ. In case of 1A, before the date they are liable to get registered. In case of 1B, before the date they get actually registration certificate. 1C, before the date of migration from composition scheme to normal scheme. 1D, before the date of conversion from exempted to taxable. Then all these 18, 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, that closing stock should have been purchased within one year prior to the closing stock date, which means from the date of invoice to the closing stock date, it should not be beyond one year. If it is beyond one year, we cannot take ITC on that. Is it even for capital goods also? Very much capital goods also. So in exam, be careful. They will be giving closing stock data, but blindly all closing stock data don't take ITC. Check whether this closing stock has been purchased within one year prior. The above closing stock, including capital goods, should have been purchased within one year prior to the closing stock date then. ITC with respect to GST paid on inputs can be availed as ITC. So how much can be availed as ITC on these inputs? Whatever GST paid that we can take as ITC. But in case of capital goods, you cannot take full GST paid. Why? You used it now. Then depreciation we need to give. How much is the depreciation? 5% for every quarter or part there are from when to when? From the date of purchase till the date of conversion conversion or migration got it see 18 1c 1d only we will take so therefore from the date of purchase till the date of migration to normal scheme from the date of purchase till the date of conversion to taxable so in case of capital goods itc gst paid minus 5 percent into number of quarters from the date of purchase till the date of migration or conversion and an electronic declaration in form gst itc 1 shall be made by the registered person within 30 days or such extended time. How to avail this ITC? Is it in GSTR 3B? No. For availing this ITC under 18 subsection 1, a separate application should be made that is form GST ITC 1 and that should be certified by a CA or CMA if the claim of ITC exceeds 2 lakhs. If the claim of ITC does not exceed 2 lakhs, self-certification. And what is the time limit within which it should be filed? Within 30 days from our such extended time from the date when you are eligible. When are you eligible under 18.1a? Whenever you get the registration certificate. 18.1b? Whenever you get the registration certificate. 18.1c? Whenever you have migrated from composition scheme to normal scheme. 18.1d? Whenever you, your exempted supply became taxable. From that date within 30 days or extended time by the commissioner, you should make application in this form and automatically how much ITC that you are eligible to, it will come into your electronic credit ledger that can be adjusted for payment of your liability. Then this is about 18 subsection 1 availment of ITC on closing stock, 18 subsection 2 time limit for availment of ITC, 18 subsection 3 transfer of ITC. When there will be transfer of ITC, as I already told you input tax credit there is no debt. 
which means the moment you took the input tax credit, you use it. If you are not using it, it will get carried forward for n number of years and you can adjust it with liability for any period. If you transfer the business as it is to the other person, the unutilized ITs also will be transferred. Okay. So, when there is a change in constitution of a registered person on account of sale, merger, demerger, amalgamation, lease or transfer of the business. So, therefore, not necessary sale, even lease also, even merger also, demerger also, any kind of transfer of business with specific provision for transfer of liabilities that is very, very important. Means you should not be transferring the business as it is. You should transfer the business with specific provision for transfer of liabilities, okay. Which means don't transfer the assets alone. Transfer the assets as well as liabilities. Then only it will be called as transfer of business. Then in that case, whatever is unutilized ITC in the electronic credit ledger of the transferor will be transferred to the electronic credit ledger of the transferee. For this, one form needs to be filed that is form GST ITC2. ITC1 is for availment of ITC on closing stock. ITC2 is for transfer of ITC in case of transfer of business. And ITC1 should be certified by CRCMA if the claim of ITC exceeds 2 lakh rupees, whereas ITC2 should always be certified by a CRCMA irrespective of the amount. But what is that they certify? That this business is transferred with this specific provision for transfer of liabilities, like that it should be certified by a CRCMA. Then, in case of demerger, what will happen? So, in case of merger, there is no issue because two entities gets merged into a single entity. So, both entities will be transferring the ITC to the new entity. What if a single entity is demerged into two entities, how the ITC can be transferred? Say AB limited is demerged into A limited and B limited, then how the ITC can be transferred? Some ratio we need. What is the ratio? Ratio of assets. We need to uh, transfer to the new entities in the ratio of assets. Uh, ratio of assets was on which day? after a demerger. For example, A B limited got demerged into A limited and B limited. A limited and B limited. Now, A limited is having an assets of 80 crores. B limited is having assets of 40 crores. Now, there is some ITC. That ITC is 8 lakhs. We have some ITC in A B limited. How much will be the ITC given to A limited? Simple. 8 lakhs into 80 divided by 40 that is 8 by 12. So, 8 lakhs into 8 by 12 is what? 8 lakhs into 8 by 12. 6 lakhs, 5 lakh, 1333 and the ITC that is given to B limited will be the remaining balance that is 2 lakh 66,667 that will be given to B limited or your understanding. So, in what ratio we need to divide? In the ratio of net assets, whether ITC availed or not on this assets. In this assets, on some of the assets we would have availed ITC, some of the assets we would not have availed ITC. Take the total assets, okay, and you distribute it. Net assets means, net assets means total assets minus ITC because ITC only we are shifting. ITC only we are shifting here, yeah? so therefore take the total assets. IT is also one of the assets. So, take the total assets minus ITC because ITC only we are transferring it to the new entity. Then transfer or change in ownership of business will include transfer or change in ownership due to death of the sole proprietor. There is a death of sole proprietor and the business carried on by the sole proprietor is now took over by his uh, son or daughter. Now, in that case, that son or daughter will be getting a new registration because they cannot continue the same registration as that of the sole proprietor. Reason being, registration requires a permanent account number. Now, when a person dies, then when new person takes over the business, his permanent account number should be updated, then automatically there will be a new registration. Then in that case, from old registration to new registration, will the ITC be transferred? Yes, it will be transferred. So, transfer or change in ownership will include transfer or change in ownership due to death of sole proprietor. One more point. Transferor and transferee should be in the same state. Actually, this is nowhere given in the law, but these are given in the form of clarifications and therefore, even in the also we can see that. So, if the transferor is in Tamil Nadu 
and the transferee is in Kerala, ITC cannot be transferred, which means transferor in Tamil Nadu means transferee should also be in Tamil Nadu, then only ITC can be transferred. So then next, uh, in case when the single registration of a person is divided into multiple registrations, like in within the state, when I have different place of business, I have an option, either I can go for single registration or I can go for separate registrations with respect to each place of business. So far, I have been continuing with single registration. Now, I want to go for separate registrations. Then in that case, whatever ITC that I have in that single registration will be distributed to the separate registrations in what ratio, just like demerger, in what ratio, assets ratio, it will be distributed. For that, one new form is there, that is ITC 2A. When the single registration gets converted into multiple registrations within the state, then also ITC again single registration can be distributed to multiple registrations by filing form GST ITC 2A. And on what basis assets ratio as on the date of new registration should be considered for this purpose. Then we have 18 subsection 4, read with 29 subsection 5. 18 subsection 1 availment of ITC on closing stock, 18 subsection 2, then time limit, 18 subsection 3, transfer of ITC, 18 subsection 4, read with 29 subsection 5 is actually opposite of 181C and 181D, 181C is what I am under composition scheme, I am going into normal scheme, now 18 subsection 4 is I am under normal scheme, I am going into composition scheme, normal scheme to composition scheme, then 181D having exempted supply now it became taxable now opposite of this i am having taxable supply now it became exempted taxable supplies to exempted or cancellation of registration in these three cases i should reverse the itc on closing stock in 18 1d and 1c what we did we availed the itc on closing stock here we will do reversal of itc on closing stock what are the three cases where we do reversal of itc on closing stock when a person is migrating from normal scheme to composition scheme or taxable supplies to exempted supplies or cancellation of registration. In these three cases, what we need to do is that we need to check inputs, inputs like inputs in such and WIP and finished goods. Inputs as such held in stock, inputs in the form of WIP and inputs in the form of FG. Then this WIP will have some inputs, this FG will have some inputs. So on these three inputs, what are the three inputs? Inputs as such held in stock, inputs in WIP, inputs in FG. We would have already availed some ITC na? that we need to reverse. ITC reversed equals to ITC availed. Whereas in case of capital goods, how much ITC I need to reverse? Same way depreciation we need to reduce and remaining ITC we need to reverse means say take the original ITC available whatever ITC that you have available and what is considered as the life of the capital goods always 60 months so ITC available divided by 60 months into balance life you need to reverse why balance life you need to reverse because now you are under composition scheme or now you are making exempted supply or now you are cancelling your registration means you should not enjoy that ITC on capital goods that's why what they are telling total ITC divided by 60 months say the balance life of this capital goods is two years proportionate to that you do the reversal so how much needs to be reversed in case of 18 subsection 4 in case of inputs whatever ITC that we avail we need to reverse in case of capital goods ITC avail divided by 60 into balance useful life then some additional points are there in this regard that is inputs and capital goods can be purchased any time because in 181C1D, the inputs and capital goods should be purchased within one year prior, time limit they gave. But here, even if you buy three years before also, you do the reversal now. Why? Their availment of ITC lost to government, so time limit one year. Here, reversal of ITC gain to government, no time limit, you understood. So, inputs and capital goods can be purchased any time on which ITC avail. If ITC not availed on such inputs and capital goods, then reversal shall not arise. If capital goods are purchased before 5 years, means depreciation already over, divided by 60 months, there is no balance life, so no need to reverse. If capital goods are purchased before 5 years, on which IT is availed, then reversal shall not arise. Now, sir, invoice is missing, sir. In case of 18 1C 1D, matching. Without matching, we cannot take ITC. 
in case of 18.1c and d matching is required for availment of itc matching required for reversal of itc no matching no matching you don't invoice don't worry you have the asset na yes sir for this asset whatever is the market value on that market value you take the gst and you do reversal if invoice pertaining to such inputs are not available then the market value as on the closing stock date can be considered and practicing ca cma certificate required in that case for what for specifying what is the market value of that goods and details of reversal needs to be reported in one form what is that form that we need to report itc 3 itc 1 is for what availment of itc on closing stock itc 2 is for what that is transfer of itc from one person to another person itc 2a is for what transfer of itc in case single registration is separated into multiple registrations itc 3 is for what reversal of itc on closing stock okay then suppose if you have sufficient balance in itc you will reverse and still you have extra amount for example itc on this closing stock is 1 lakh itc on this entire closing stock is 1 lakh and you have 1 lakh 50000 in your credit ledger what you will do 1 lakh you will adjust still 50000 is there na what you will do 50000 it will be lapsed you can't do anything with respect to that it shall be lapsed so that's why don't do reversal you sell off the business you transfer the business because when you transfer the business as per 18 subsection 3 itc will be transferred so you don't have to do any reversal of itc and all so therefore this itc will not be lapsed suppose if there is any shortfall for reversal example the itc that needs to be reversed on this closing stock is 1 lakh but you have only 80,000 rupees. So, 1 lakh 80,000 adjusted from the ledger. Still, there is a shortfall of 20,000. The 20,000 you need to pay off your pocket. So, then the shortfall shall be payable using cash ledger and this computation shall be made separately for CGST, SGST, UTGST and IGST. Then 18 subsection 6 already we saw. When 18 subsection 6 is applicable, when we have some capital goods on which ITC avail and those capital goods are sold, then we need to take ITC avail minus 5% for every quarter or part thereof from the date of purchase till the date of sale or GST on sale value whichever is higher. In few places, we are doing minus 5% for every quarter or part thereof. In some places, we are taking total ITC divided by 60 into balance useful life. So, what are the places? Actually, one place only. We are doing total ITC divided by 60 into balance useful life. That is 18 subsection 4. Just now we discussed. Now, nah, here only we will be doing that way. But in all other places, we follow depreciation in what mode? Minus 5% for every quarter or part thereof. That only we will do. Then, this 18 subsection 6 is not applicable in case of refractory bricks, molds and dyes, jigs and fixtures supplied as scrap. Refractory bricks which are used in the ovens for uh, like commercial cleans for heating the material, those bricks, molds and dyes, jigs and fixtures, these are basically equipments which are used in the manufacturing process. Even though its life is not more than 5 years, it is sold within 5 years as scrap. Then don't do that A point. What is that A point? ITC avail minus 5% and all, always the GST will be GST payable on normal sale value. No need to do this A or B, whichever is higher. So, normally you will take GST on sale value only. That is about section 18. Then section 19 is related to job work provisions. Section 19 read with section 143 of CGST Act. What does job work provision says? That is, you purchase some inputs or capital goods. Those inputs or capital goods, you are sending to the job worker for processing. Now, no need to pay any GST. At the time when you are sending it to the job worker, you purchase some inputs, you purchase some capital goods, you are sending it to the job worker. No need to pay any GST on the goods sent to the job worker. And even you can take ITC also. No issue. You can take ITC. However, ensure that you are bringing the processed goods or capital goods back to your place within the time stipulated. What is the time that is stipulated? In case of processed goods, one year and it can be extended for a further period of one year. In case of capital 
Well, goods, what is the time limit within which it should be brought back? Three years and it can be extended for a further period of two years. The time limit you should remember here. For inputs, what is the time limit? Processed goods should be returned back within. Processed goods should be returned back within one year and it can be extended for a further period of one year. Capital should be returned back within three years and it can be extended for a further period of two years. Okay. And what will happen within that time if the goods are not brought back? On expiry of that specified time limit, it will be treated as supply in your hands and you need to pay GST along with interest. So, after two years, it will become supply two years before. You are after two years. Today, you came to know that it became supply two years before. One year plus extended time limit one year. The goods are not brought back. But today, we will come to know that the goods are sold two years before and we need to now pay GST along with interest on that. You understood? So, that is what I said. Every section we have interest, GST fin corp. So, therefore, this is the stupidity that we have in case of this which means we should ensure that the goods are brought back to our place within two years that is one year plus one year or three years plus two years in case of capital goods okay say this inputs inputs to be within one year when it is sent on job work either it is sent directly from principal suppliers place of business or principal's place of business. So, that inputs may be sent from where to where? Either from the principal's supplier's place of business, okay? Or it can be sent from the principal's place of business. But whatever the case may be, it should be brought back within one year from the date of dispatch to the job worker. If it is sent from principal's place, or from the date of receipt by the job worker, if the goods are directly sent from the supplier's place, you understood. I have one supplier, I am principal, you are job worker, here I have one supplier. Suppose if the goods are directly sent from the supplier's place, the time limit of one year or three years should be counted from when, from the date when the job worker has received it, you got it. Suppose if the supplier has sent the goods to me and I dispatched it to my job worker, then this one year or three years should be counted from the date of dispatch to the job worker. Understood or not? So, if the goods are sent from principal's place of business, that one year or three years should be counted from the date of huh, dispatch. Dispatch on the date of sent to the principal. Okay. Suppose if the goods are sent directly from the supplier's place, then that one year or three years should be counted from the date of receipt by the job worker. Is it clear? And ITC not required to be reversed by the principal when the goods are sent on job work and such goods should be sent under the letter of delivery chalan and e -way bill. Even if goods are directly received by job worker, ITC can be availed by principal because we have the concept of deemed delivery. When the goods are delivered to the job worker, an invoice is raised to the principal, principal can take ITC with respect to that. Then, job worker can take ITC on inputs and input service used for job work? Yes. Job worker will do process now. He will buy some inputs and input service. On that, can he take ITC? Yes. And uh, if the processed goods are cap and capital goods are returned after one year or three years, what will happen? It is treated as new supply by the job worker and chargeable to GST. See here, not returned within one year or three years. So, what principal will do? What principal will do? Will deem it as supply and will pay the GST. Got it? Along with interest. Now, the job worker is returning after one year or three years. It will be treated as new supply by the job worker and you need to pay GST as if you are selling goods to me. You got it? Again, I am repeating, I have purchased inputs and capital goods. I am sending it to you and you should return to me within one year or three years. You return to me within one year or three years. Any consequences? No consequences. Leave it. You are not returning within one year or three years. Then what will happen to the principal? So, whatever, you know, sent to job worker, treated as supply and pay GST. 
along with interest okay now after this one year or three years when the job worker is returning it will be treated as supply made by job worker and job worker should pay gst on those goods got it understood that is this then so this is what usually i'll ask my students to remember that you know when a boy fall in love with a girl and they are in a relationship so boy will be giving you know like a lot of gifts to the girl and girl will be giving lot of gifts to the boy and all and whenever there is relationship continuing no problem but when there is a breakup when there is a breakup then the girl boy will not ask anything but the girl will ask whatever i gave it to you everything you return i gave this give big list she will give so this product i gave this greeting card i gave everything you return so like that till the time 143 143 is satisfied okay what is 143 here time limit that is one year and three years till the time the time limit under 143 is satisfied no problem relationship will be so beautiful the day when 143 is breached break up you understood or not then what will happen then whatever you got as a benefit everything you pay along with interest you understood or not then again when the girl realizes and do the patch up that is like a new love story new chapter you understood or not so therefore again when the job worker return the goods to the principal it is treated like a new product and it will be chargeable to gst accordingly you got it then next if job worker is not registered what will happen principal should declare job worker's place as additional place of business of principal and jurisdictional officer must be intimated about the job work contract because we are sending the goods to the job work place now without paying any gst that's why we need to intimate then processed goods may be brought back to principal's place or can be sold directly from the job worker's place it's okay there is no condition that always it should be brought back either you can bring it back to your place or you can sell it from there itself okay but the time limit should be within one year or three years and all these details needs to be reported in one return what is it return form it Four, so ITC four contains the details of goods sent on job work and received from job work. What is the time limit for filing this ITC four? If aggregate turnover of the principal during previous year exceeds five crore, then two times I need to file this ITC four. If the aggregate turnover during previous year exceeds five crores, two times that is half yearly. For the first half year, April to September by twenty fifth of October. and for the second half year from october to march it is 25th of april suppose if the principal's aggregate turnover during previous year does not exceed 5 crores then annually by 25th april only once they need to file that is yearly by 25th april of the succeeding financial year got it so total four forms we have seen itc 1 when in case of availment of itc on closing stock time limit 30 days from the date when you are eligible and certified by cacma yes if the amount of itc exceeds 2 lakhs then number 2 itc 2 transfer of itc and time limit not given so whenever there is transfer of itc required at the time itc 2 needs to be filed and certified by cacma yes always then itc 3 in case of reversal of itc time limit not specified but whether i whether cacma certification required yes in case we replace invoice value with market value itc4 when goods sent on job work and received from job work cacma certification not required at all and what is the time limit that we need to file it 25th of the month following every half year if the aggregate turnover during previous year exceeds 5 crores if the aggregate turnover during previous year does not exceed 5 crores then it will be yearly by 25th april of the succeeding financial year so these points can be tested in mcq with this we have completed section 19 okay see this the last sections that we have in input tax credit is input service distributor 
section 20 and 21 of CGST Act, page number 72. So, what is this input service distributor is about? There is a head office. That head office receives the tax invoices with respect to the services provided to its branches. So, service is provided by a person to the branches or divisions of a head office, but the invoice is raised to the head office. Now, the head office will take the credit with respect to these invoices and distribute the credit to these branches. And as this head office is doing this distribution of credit, they are called as input service distributor. And all these branches should be under the same permanent account number. And therefore, for a branch of a subsidiary company, can the ITC be distributed? No. For the same company branches under the same permanent account number, ITC can be distributed. And this ISD requires a separate registration. Even though they have a registration in the state, but as a ISD, they need to get a separate registration. Then, inputs cannot be distributed. Inputs credit cannot be distributed. Capital goods credit cannot be distributed. What they can distribute is only credit related to input services. For example, goods are sold to branch, but invoice is raised to the head office. Can the head office take the credit and distribute it? No, impossible. Because that is inputs. What they can distribute? See the name itself. Input service distributor. So they can distribute only the input services. Then, one more advantage what we have in this is that CGST credit and SGST credit will be distributed as CGST and SGST credit only in the same state, whereas it will be distributed as IGST credit in the other state. For example, if ISD is located in Tamil Nadu and the branch 1 is located in Tamil Nadu, branch 2 in Karnataka and branch 3 in Kerala. Now, in this case, to branch 1, to branch 1, ISD is in Tamil Nadu now, branch also in Tamil Nadu. So, to branch 1, CGST credit distributed as CGST, SGST as SGST, IGST as IGST. Whereas, to these two branches, which are in the other state than that of ISD, CGST credit, SGST credit and IGST credit, all these three will be distributed as IGST credits only. You got it? So, when the ISD is in Tamil Nadu and the branches are in the other state, CGST credit will be distributed as CGST, SGST, IGST if it is in the same, same state. If it is different state, CGST, SGST, IGST, everything will be distributed as credit, IGST only. CGST and SGST is distributed as CGST, SGST for the unit in the same state of ISD and distributed as IGST if the unit is in the different state than that of ISD. Then next one, if input service is attributable only to one division, that is the service is not common for all the division, the service is only for one division, then the entire credit will be given to that division only. If the service is attributable to these two divisions, then the credit will be apportioned between these two divisions, distributed between these two divisions. Only when the service is common between all the divisions, then it will be distributed to all the divisions in what ratio? Turnover ratio. Got it? It's not the assets ratio. When somewhere we discussed assets ratio where demerger, transfer of ITZ, demerger, single registration, getting separated into multiple registrations. On what basis we will distribute that ITZ or transfer that ITZ? Assets ratio. But here for ISD distribution, the credit will be distributed in what ratio? It will be the turnover ratio. See this. If the input service is attributable to one unit, ITC distributed to that unit entirely. If the input service is attributable to two or more units, then the ITC will be distributed to two or more units in turnover ratio. Suppose if the input service is attributable to all units, then ITC will be distributed to all units which are operational based on what again turnover ratio. What turnover should be taken? Either you take the turnover of previous year. If the previous year data not available, take the turnover of the previous quarter. Got it? 
what should be taken as a turnover ratio for distribution either previous financial year or previous quarter should be taken for distribution. Then we have some additional points in this regard. ITC to be distributed on a monthly basis means April month we got some invoices and can we accumulate it for May month and distribute these two for April and May month together in May? No. That month invoices needs to be distributed in that month itself. What here? It's raining like this. Huh? Nothing will happen, no? So, I, I got fear here after seeing this building, no? If some students are walking there in the staircase, I can feel the vibration. So, because of heavy rainfall, this plaster of Paris and all will get melted and will fall on our head. Nothing of that sort, no? So, huh? If it happens, why should I go? So, anything of that sort happens, no? Let me know. We will jump from here itself. We will leave. See this data. I am not able to, you know, hear anything. My voice itself, I am not able to hear because of this. How you are able to listen? Is it audible? Huh? Ah, fine. Say this. So, ITC, excess ITC distributed, ah, sorry, ITC to be distributed on a monthly basis and they need to file a return. Who should file a return? The input service distributor, whatever ITC that they have distributed to the branches, they need to file a return. What is the return? GSTR 6. By when they need to file that return, 13th of the month following every month. And excess distributed ITC can be recovered by issuing ISD credit note. What does it mean? Say for example, they have distributed to Division 1, Division 2 and Division 3 ITC to be distributed. ITC to be distributed. How you will get ITC to be distributed based on what ratio? Turnover ratio. ITC to be distributed based on turnover ratio is 20,000, 40,000 and 10,000. This is the ITC to be distributed based on turnover ratio. But ITC actually distributed. ITC actually distributed if you see here. 10,000 and here 50,000 and here 10,000. Now, in this case, to whom we have excess distributed, to whom we have excess distributed, division 2. So, therefore, from division 2, excess distributed credit of 10,000 will be recovered by the department. Is it clear? Suppose if you want to rectify this, if the ISD wants to rectify this, what they can do, they can give a ISD credit note. So, ISD credit note to be given to whom? Division 2. For how much? 10,000. So, already they distributed 50. Now, when they give the credit note, to that extent it will be reduced. Then, ISD invoice. ISD invoice to be given to whom? Or ISD debit note to be given to whom? ISD debit note to be given to whom? Division 1 for 10,000. Are you understanding this? So, whenever there is some excess credit that is distributed, so this is the actual credit that should be distributed. But whenever excess credit is distributed, they will be issuing a ISD credit note. Excess distributed ITC can be recovered by issuing ISD credit note and shortfall in distribution can be distributed against the ISD invoice. Distributed credit should not exceed the credit available. Suppose, what is the total ITC available here? So, 20 plus 40 plus 10,000, that will be now 70,000. But, they should not distribute more than 70,000. If they distribute more than 70,000, that is an offense. Okay. 
that is the meaning of that statement distributed credit should not exceed the credit available for distribution if the isd has distributed excess credit to any recipient the excess can be recovered only from that recipient along with interest say for example if the isd has not issued the credit note if the isd has not issued the credit note or debit note then what will happen from division to so 10000 will be recovered along with interest 10000 recover along with interest from division b whereas for division 1 they will not give any benefit understood if you are issuing the credit note then you can take back the 10000 and give it to division 1 if you are not doing that then department will do the recovery from division 2 and they will not pay this 10000 rupees to division 1 that is a disadvantage of wrong distribution credit see this if isd has distributed excess credit to any recipient the excess can be recovered from the recipient with interest isd should obtain a compulsory registration irrespective of their aggregate turnover so in this example even though in tamil nadu they have a registration again isd registration should be separately obtained in tamil nadu just because they have a registration in tamil nadu they cannot use the same registration for distribution of credit they need to get a separate registration that is this point then while computing the turnover in multiple places we have come across turnover computation in three places rule 42 rule 43 and section 20 these three places we have come across turnover so rule 42 exempted turnover to total turnover rule 43 also exempted turnover to total turnover section 20 also on turnover ratio we distribute while determining this turnover the old indirect taxes should be excluded generally old indirect taxes should be included in aggregate turnover already we discussed that in aggregate turnover definition but old indirect taxes excise duty central sales tax and value added tax should be excluded while doing the turnover under rule 42 43 and section 20 then there is one latest amendment that is in case of transportation of goods from india to outside india what will be taken as place of supply ending point of the goods will be taken so in case of services by way of transportation of goods section 12 from india to outside india place of supply will be taken as ending point of the goods so therefore consequently can the recipient take itc if the place of supply is outside india supplier in india recipient also in india but the place of supply is outside india can the recipient take itc no issue with respect to that happily recipient can take itc if place of supply is outside india can the recipient in india avail itc with respect to the same yes we don't have any restriction in this chapter that he cannot take itc so that he is eligible to take the itc example for that is transportation of goods say x is a person located in the state of west bengal who intends to export goods to a person y located in singapore so in that case of transportation of goods ending point will be taken as the place of supply and suppose if they want to take itc can they take itc yes so therefore that is this situation about and already we discussed this example while discussing place of supply that supplier is located in maharashtra and ending point of the goods is pakistan but the recipient is in india only can the recipient take itc with respect to that yes recipient can take itc with this we completed input tax credit